Please note the views and opinions expressed by the hosts on this show are not necessarily the views held by the station. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio. Now it's our turn. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to uh, Friday Night Syncretism with yours truly, Kate of Gaia, and of course, magnanimous, always intriguing, always fun, Santo Bonacci. How are you, Santo? Very well, thanks, Kate. Yourself? Oh, good, yeah. You know, all things considered, you know, dealing with uh, little three-headed dogs everywhere, but, you know, other than that, uh, good. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we're we're going to have some fun tonight. <laughs> So, uh, you, you, oh, go ahead, go ahead. You got your dogs back. No, no, I'm speaking of uh, the three-headed dogs that I get to deal with. Everybody's little cerebuses that uh, they ah. keep in a short leash that I have to beat to death. <laughs> you know, and I will. <laughs> Just, you know me, it's my nature. Right? <laughs> I guarantee you, my cerebus three-headed dog is way bigger and way better trained than yours. <laughs> it will fetch and go for fresh meat. You know. Anyway, yeah, no, it's just uh, amazing to watch things unfold, especially this week. The way, uh, uh, you know, when you start really seeing what's going on in the world, uh, you really start to lose patience for any form of uh, physical drama. Uh, you know, be it whatever news story, or whatever. It's like when everyone starts talking about it in the literal, I just go, oh, uh, "You're missing the story. What is it saying?" You know. Um, I think we can agree that maybe the Bible and maybe, you know, the Quran and a few other interesting, you know, notable books. Uh, an allegory, yeah. That's all they do. Yep. So would it not make sense that if the Bible were, you know, indoctrinated with in the literal sense, you know, from the Flavians on back, you know, blah, 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 blah. Wouldn't it make sense that if they're trying to get this world to be the literal then everyone get will take everything that's in front of them literal, therefore tying them to the literal book. See, here's the thing. When you finally understand that everything that is written in these books is allegorical, once you start deciphering it properly, guess what happens to the world outside? Well, gosh darn it. It becomes allegorical too. As above, so below. As within, so without. Did anybody notice that in the Kabbalion, or was I the only one that fucking noticed that? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So when 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 we're, here we are trying to take this allegorical book, right? We find out all this beautiful truth in it, and then we try to explain it literally, and it just completely defeats the purpose, you know. Uh, and I'm talking from the literal world viewpoint. It's like, I, you know, and, and no harm at Tony. I was just posting stuff, and he had made another post. Something about wakey, wakey, the big lie. It's like, you still staring at this stuff, bud? You still staring at the you know, rubberneck in the car wreck? <laughs> or can you not see the allegory behind it? Uh, actually, the allegory is in front of it. It's the literal that's behind the veil. Um, so does that make sense to you? Does to me. You know, yeah, you know, it's it's like people coming to me with, with legal things. What part of your committed fraud aren't people getting? Because it's really simple. Once you understand that you are committing fraud, and you weren't doing it with intent, right? It's ignorance of that law that you're busting, like, from the day you you got here. It's the ignorance of it that's keeping you trapped. So once you become knowledgeable of what the trap was, and actually, that you were in one, that's the big one, right? Did you even know you were in a trap? And once you go, oh, that bear trap's biting into my ankle real hard. Oh, and then you figure out where the mechanisms are, and then you just open the trap and take your foot out. But everyone wants to go, oh, that's a trap. God, that hurts. Shake, 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 shake. God, that hurts. Shake. No, no, no. Try to chew their own legs off. <laughs> There's an allegory for you. It's, it, it, it just blows my mind. Do you want the answer? I mean, I've got the answer for people if they want it. If they can see, here's the thing: once you get yourself back into a condition of knowledge, you know you're not ignorant of the trap. You've opened the trap up. Now what you do is you take the trap and you shove it on the face of the system. It goes, and there it is. Turn the tables. I'll tell you what the proof of the intent to commit fraud without disclosure to my mom and dad 
It was very simple. They they put a building up to prove it. It's called a registry office. If there wasn't an intent to commit fraud via deception and non-disclosure in the first place, the building wouldn't exist, you see. So the mere fact that these buildings, government, whoever that is, these buildings, the simple fact that they exist is proof enough for me, I see the allegory, that there was an intent to deceive. You know, the first brick that got laid to put these buildings up and have people, ignorant, dumb, paper-pushing people, looking in them, that are only kept smart enough to push the little buttons that go ka-ching, 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 so that they get their little ka-ching at the end of the week, which is just a pittance. Keeps them happy, keeps them all fed, keeps them all ego-driven, yeah? So that's proof enough for me. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is quite simply this. I have no name, and I do not give a name. Uh, there was an interesting – here, um, let me grab it because you, you weren't actually uh, – I don't think you caught last night's show at all. But there was – or the night before, there was a very interesting um, – Oh, what's the best word to describe it? Well, there's an interesting definition in Black's Law that I would really love to read to you. It's in Black's Law Ninth. I mean, I know me, Santo, uh, just like you, we go at this from the very spiritual perspective, right? So, that's what I do. And I'm going to share something. Um, and I know, because it, it, I had it highlighted in the book, because I, I passed it you know, once before and looked at it. And it had triggered then, but not to the same degree that it's triggering right now, because, gosh darn, I have a different understanding of what's going on now, right? So let me let me share this with you. Sorry, I just had to go and grab the book itself. And you know me, I like uh, Black's Law Knife. Oh, and for anyone that doesn't have a copy of it, don't worry, there's one there for you if you want it. You can go to kateofgaia.wordpress.com, and it's a 100 meg file. Um, free to download, grab it, it's there. Ninjas so very kindly put it up. And uh, it's there for everyone as long as well as everything else. And guess what? It's free. Huh. I don't believe in copyrights. <coughs> copyrights are for fictions. Information and truth for me is real. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Um, what's your understanding, uh, Santo, of the, of the word gift? Uh, gift is a, well, something that is given um, freely without. Uh, desire for res- you know, reciprocation, I guess. Right, without consideration, yeah. Mm, without consideration. Yeah, so it's like when I give you a gift, I don't expect you to, well, not like they've tried at Christmas. Well, I got, so, uh, somebody's going to get me a gift, so I have to get them one. See, that's not a gift, that's called an obligation. <laughs> you are obligated to, to buy something because you feel guilty otherwise. But here's the spiritual, and this is why it's so imperative and why they call it a given name. If something has been given, it must have been a gift. Stands to reason to me. So here's uh, here's what a gift is, and I'm going to give you a, 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 uh, an anagram of it. So here it is, gift, noun, 12th century. The voluntary transfer of property to another without compensation. A thing so transferred, gift. Now, there's another one. Um, I'm, I'll go and look this up, but it's um, C. Inter Vivos Gift. But what... Here, actually, I'll do that right now so we can keep this. Inter Vivos Gift uh, from 1848. A gift of personal property made during the donor's lifetime and delivered to the donee with the intention of irrevocably surrendering control over the property, also termed gift inter vivos, lifetime gift or an absolute gift. Okay. But here's the interesting one. Here's the anagram. G-I-F-T, abbreviation, the abbreviated form. So G dot I dot F dot T dot stands for gamete intrafallopian transfer. What does that sound like to you? Sounds like a kid, doesn't it? Hmm. Right. Well, what's a gamete? You got a gamete, zygote, and then you have embryo, and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is like right from source here. Gamete intra fallopian transfer. That's very interesting. So I see where they they went that route. Now, 
they call it a given name, and then we'll get into what you want to talk about. I just thought this would be an interesting thing to start off. I had a good chat with Johnny um, just actually about an hour ago. And, uh, you know, still, people are still trying these tricks and gimmicks, UCC and UP and the rest of the the illusion. And, and guys, stop. 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 You're driving me nuts. People think they can play the system. The system isn't meant to be played. You're either party to it, i.e. one of the bad guys that's, quote-unquote, right, of which your ego is completely sold. You're, you've sold your soul, literally, to the devil. That's an allegory. And you are trapped in the... You're being harvested in the in, in the spiritual, sacred geometry here. Right? Phi, psychol, physical. Or you decide that you don't want to be part of that. So you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. Sorry. You cannot be completely physical and or completely spiritual. You got to find the middle road here. Right? Cuz the the physical is the effect of the spiritual. Not and here we are trying to be cause over this effect that we're at effect to. It's stupid. So you know, when I hear people talking about, well, I've got this thing, uh, you know, treasury and credits and la la la. Shut up. Cry me a river. Look at you. Gimme, gimme. Still caught in the game. Still don't know what money is. Still don't know that you're cannibalizing your fellow human beings. Still don't care, obviously. <laughs> Give me an arm, quick. I'm really hungry. Fucking zombies. Walking Dead. You're not seeing the clues in Hollywood? TV shows? You know? Dead Man Walking? Lots of hints out there that try to tell you that you're dead. You need to wake up. And the longer you play in this game, the longer you stay dead, right? The birth certificate is a death certificate. But here's the clincher. Go to creativeguy.wordpress.com. Two documents you need to, to to read, and you need to read them until you get what the documents are saying. One is an easy-to-read, layman's terms, description of I who shall not be named, which is a more, quote, legal-easy type document that... They understand, right? So those two documents, the long part of it, and I who shall not be named. Didn't get it the first time? Then you need to read long and short of it, I who shall not be named. If you still didn't get it, here's another suggestion. Read this. The long part of it, and I who shall not be named. And keep doing that, you know, until it sinks in and you go, oh, my God, I see it. Because only until you see it, you are in fraud. Once you see it, the name is yours. Because the fraud was placed on mom and dad. The aid and abetting of the fraud, the onus was placed on them to get their children, i.e. you, me, all the rest of us, to commit fraud. They're the ones that aid and abetted by giving us a document we should never have ever gotten uh, because they gave the name away. That's why they call it a given name. That's why it's held under seal. A seal or a say all, himself, herself, itself, all, is the, is the highest order of promises. One of sacred proportions. That's why they hold it under seal. But here's the trick. You see, the agreement that we went into, even in mom and dad's ignorance, there was still an intent to deceive. And a fraud revealed as null and void, nunc pro tunc. So now it's up to, you know, the system to say, you know, you say to them, is it the court, is it the system's intent now to aid and abet me into committing a fraud that I know uh, of using somebody else's property that clearly isn't mine? It says copyright. And there was an intent by the system in the first place to aid and abet me into doing this via my parents as third-party interlopers. How is that a contract? How is it binding on me? It's got nothing to do with me. At which point you raise your digitus impudicus, you spit in their eye, and you... Dress them funny and walk out. No, they already do that. Never mind. So there you go. Any other questions, class? I didn't think so. Start doing it. You'll see what happens. Watch. Plant the seeds for crying out loud. I'm just tired of this. <sighs> Shit all the time. Anyway, so uh, what's up in the stars, Santo? <laughs> uh, well, I haven't really checked recently. Uh, good thing is Jupiter's in Cancer now, so... That's the sign of his exaltation, and that will bring many um, abundant things to people who have uh, strong Jupiter in their charts in particular. But um, Jupiter in Cancer is a very nice thing. comes around every 12 years, 
So, you know, I've had tw uh, four of these Ju Jupiter Cancer Transits in my life, I guess, five. I'm 50. Uh, oh, four. Four, yeah. anyway, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, um, enjoy it. It's, um, it's a beautiful uh, motherly sign, and Jupiter is the quintessential fatherly figure, really. So, blending his beautiful airy energy, Jupiter's light is considered in astrology the greatest of all the lights. There's nothing comparable. Simply, there is nothing comparable, you know. Even, even the adoration for Sirius and Venus and the moon and the sun just doesn't compare. He gets all the glory. Uh, in fact, Firmicus Matern Maternus, if there was only just Jupiter, we would be immortal. But because the system has decreed or the gods have decreed that uh, bodies should um, have a certain amount of life, the other planets um, and their energy comes into play and destroys the work of Jupiter because his light is just is that good. And so in Cancer, the motherly sign, the, the sign of the home and the ancestry, um, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a great, fat, abundant year with Jupiter. Many, right. many... Yep. And, of course, Cancer is the home of the moon and the uh, the emotions, really. Cardinal water, the water of the bodies. So there's Jupiter stimulating the psychic, the emotional part. And uh, with his best, very, very best of energy, really. Um, Jupiter also rules Pisces and, and Sagittarius, but in Cancer, that's his exaltation, and so it's very significant. This is pay attention to uh, to what that means and how it affects the individual, yourself, and you will see its influence in your life. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I've been uh, playing with my new uh, Mayan card that uh, Miranda sent. And oh my, <laughs> they're quite something, and uh, just it just backs up everything you uh, you just said there. Yeah, there's uh, monstrous things right now. You know? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, did, I was going to say I gave a, a, a I've never used this analogy before, but I'm going to use it tonight uh, when I was talking to Johnny. Um, when we talk about uh, inspired by the word exaltation, no less, right? A lot of people have a hard time letting go of the system and you know, trying to find this way and that way and the other. And um, got to tell you guys, I've I've been in it for well over two years, and uh, no, it's not easy. It's not. But don't expect anything worth having to be easy to get. That's the gimme gimme. Uh, join the free man on the land movement. They'll help you with that one. Um, or the sovereign citizens, yeah, they'll help you too. Or, or any of these UCC people, they'll oof, opt, sign up, give away your soul. Um, yeah, go ahead. But here's the analogy. You know, so many of us want to uh, want to soar, but we're so unable to let go. And this is why uh, I'm hoping that you can do a couple of charts tonight. Uh, I really want to get Ninja's chart. <laughs> like I'm so like chopping at the bit to hear her chart. But uh, to get back to what I was saying. You see, without your design, you don't really have any idea or any clue of who or what you are, what your purpose is. You might have an inkling inside. I can't say I don't. I'm not your experience. You are. You don't, only you know what your perspective heart says. If you want some helpful hints, though, know thyself. That's that's what the as above science is all about. It's about giving you the clues back as to what particular angle or angel you are. And to start, you know, manifesting the things that you were supposed to when you got here, you know, because I can only hear the the resonance inside of me, the intuitive is like, you know, before I came in back into this game, it's like, oh yeah, this is going to be easy, this is going to be great, this is going to be wow, and you don't remember anything. <laughs> the good news is, if you're smart, which we all are, we always leave all the clues and place them into the game board, right? We come into the game fully prepared. Um, Unfortunately, uh, 
we come in after sipping the cup of forgetfulness uh, allegory. Can't have a game if you know the outcome, right? But you do know you're going to win. That's and that could be all manner of things. Depends on what your experience is supposed to be. But it's like this: the ego is the only thing holding you. It's the one that ties up and binds up all the emotions. And one of the things that I found very effective with the charts, in particular, you know, be it uh, Western, uh, Zodiac, uh, Chinese, Mayan, whatever the case may be, they all they all matter. They all actually have beautiful pieces of the puzzle. Or Human Design America, for that matter. And the ego is completely controlled with emotion. It's the it's it's the it, if you can take the ego and and understand that it only lives while the body is alive. Of course, it's going to be body intensive. It's it, you know it's going to want to you know indulge in all the seven deadly right. You know the lust, greed, the the pride, the, and all the rest of the crap that goes along with you know living in a quote sinful <laughs> unquote uh, existence of of the world worldly. That's what the ego is. And you know, the ego, once it gets very comfortable and good survival, you know, the 1.8 VCRs, uh, the 3.6 Jaguars, the 18,000 square foot home that you know only two people live in, it's totally ridiculous, and you know, mountains of of money makes the ego very happy, but it destroys the the soul. That's the trade off. That's fine. You know, you you want to have all the physical things. Well, you're giving up your spirituality in the process. There's a way to balance this. <laughs> That's what we're working towards, where it's neutral abundance, and you're not only, you're not possessed by your possessions, basically. So all of these things, and that's family too. That's friends. That's culture. That's you know the you know whatever groups you're affiliated with, and all the little cliques and everything else you want to be a part of. These are all attachments. So let's make attachments into a thread or a very thin rope. That's holding you. Now imagine for a, a moment, if you will, that you're an eagle, and you suddenly wake up one day and you go, "I want to fly," and then you go, "Thump," and you're going to go so far because you got all these threads or little ropes tied to your talons. Now there, you can still fly a little bit. You can get a better view from where you are, but Pinocchio, you got to cut your strings, and some of them, you know, might take a chainsaw to get through. But if you want to be free, that's what you got to do. So, so don't think for one minute you can fly like an eagle while you have attachments holding you. These are the emotional bonds, right? That's why when they say, you know, you have a bond with someone, <laughs> it's very literal in an allegorical sense. That's why they created birth bonds. They stick that puppy right to your ass until you know, learn how to peel it off. That's one of the biggest let goes of all. That's when we stop worshiping the system that's when we stop playing in the system and understanding what it really is when you start figuring it out that you're you're the ones actually feeding the beast and and making sure the vampires have all the blood they need and of course spiritual energetics um when you finally decide you've had enough then you then you'll cut those ropes and you'll let go and you will get into the stream of universal life so don't expect to be flying too far while you've got all these ropes tying your ass to the uh, the allegorical ground because you ain't going to do it. So this is one of the joys when Santa comes on for syncretism. You get a better understanding of how these designs work and how they can integrate into your life. And, oh, a quick announcement too. Um, starting Sunday night, um, I will, uh, I'll I'll be doing on-air tarot readings uh, for people. Um, you know, I kind of get loose on that a bit. Um, Magnolia, I was talking to last night was uh first one and um it's looking like it's going to be carol harris uh, from france the other carol uh that uh will be second in line there uh like you asanto i don't uh um doing reads takes a little more than five minutes so i'm not sure how many i can squeeze in I'll do my best, and uh, first come, first served, and no harm, no foul. If I get to you, great. If I don't, but I'll tell you this. I, like Santo, do not have time, whether it was paid for or not, to do tarot readings during the day, all right? Because it takes generally an hour to do a decent one. It can take hours to do a great one, uh, but I can get the point across very fairly quickly. Um, but... Uh, 
just wanted to get that out. So there's the allegory, Santo. So um, take it from there. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose you know. I mean, that needs to be said because it's um, it's really uh, helping people to see that uh, participating in fictions or Babylon the Babylon the Great, as it is put in theology. Is harmful to the health. <laughs> Deadly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I see around me too enough, uh, you know, of that going on still. But look, it's uh, advancing. We are making a lot of headway, and uh, so th what we've come to do is certainly doable. It's feasible, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it properly. <laughs> Agreed. Yep. It's going to be done. Uh, everything will go ahead as per scripted, and uh, the script was written by the best of the best. You know, it's not a poor uh, production. No, no, most certainly not. <laughs> mm. It's a perfect script. It's only us that are messing it up. Yep, <laughs> yep. And uh, because people are, you know, we're suffering with a lot of, uh, you know, atrophy and sort of uh, inertia and, um, you know, uh, sleep condition, um, hypnotism, but there's still, there's still a lot of it, you know. It takes a long time to get rid of those toxins and that teaching and that conditioning. It's a lifetime thing, really. You've got to cover, uh, peel layers and layers off. But uh, the good thing is that your audience is receptive to, you know, the higher sciences and able to use them to, you know, for leverage, to um, catapult them in the ascension process. Um, that's what it's for. These are all, the ancients left us the best of the best stuff. Stuff, and they, they etched it into the rocks you know, for instance, one example is the Zodiac of Dendera, 5,000 years old, they say. <laughs> um, but you could put a, another zero on the end of that at least. But, um, but they did that so that idiots that came along after wouldn't be able to scratch them out. <laughs> so the cross has endured, the cardinal cross, it has endured. Uh, when Marco Polo went to Japan, he saw everywhere the cross. When Columbus and the conquistadores invaded the Americas, the cross was everywhere. Everywhere was the cross. The Chinese have the cross, the Indians have the swastika, um, everywhere on the planet, in one form or another. And, and it remains, because that that cross describes everything in the and everything in the universe. In theology, they talk of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge. Those are the two trees, the two axes, axes of the cross. Um, they also depict the process of creation, how creation is done through vibration. Through vibration, and vibration shares a root with the word verb. And verb is the Latin word for the Greek word logos which is at the end of all of our sciences, astrology. Um, um, one more for verb, ready? Yeah. It's uh, ver dash B, capital B, which is 13. Ver meaning truth, so the higher truth. It's action, right? The act ion. Beautiful, exactly. Uh, and so <clears throat> verb, you see it in the word reverberate. So it's a vibration, it's the word, it's the word of God, vibration. So this crisscrossing, the cross, describes this vibration. And it also describes the four cardinal points along the ecliptic of the sun's path. And describes them in two dimensions. March the 21st is the equinox, June the 21st is the solstice, September the 21st is an equinox, and December the 21st is the other solstice. And those are the four cardinal points. <coughs> and so, 
it describes how electricity, the electric sun, gets things done along the ecliptic. And it has four points, and it describes those four strong points of the uh, cardinal posts. Yes, that's right. Posts, stakes, pivots, they are called... Either one of those in astrology, this is why Jesus has 12 posts, 12 apostles, because the 12 signs were called posts. <laughs> uh, and, so, and so they left it to us and see what we would make of it. And so we could never um, scratch it out as the elites have tried to do. They've tried to destroy all those uh, <clears throat> temple uh, reliefs. And, and you see, they're, doing, they're still doing this in, in uh, fundamentalist countries uh, where they're destroying, you know, um, <clears throat> some of this uh, stuff that was etched into stones for our, you know, for our times, you see. And and taking them away and stealing them. For instance, the Dendera stone is no longer in Dendera, <laughs> on the on the banks of the Nile. It's now in the French Museum in the Louvre, in a dark little room. You see, because they want you to think that this is just a a stone that the, you know that the means nothing. It has no technology on it that can help you. And you know the barbaric Egyptians uh, just um, had this stone, and here we French, we enlightened ones, uh, you know, have captured it for your amusement. There you go. Look at this and and, and see how far we have advanced now. You know we have uh, allopathic uh, medicine now uh, to treat your diseases, whereas Hippocrates said <clears throat> that a practitioner of truth, a doctor or a medic, cannot call himself one if he is ignorant of astrology. And of course doctors uh, are proud of their Hippocratic oath and they, they display this on their, in their clinics, you see. Uh, <clears throat> but they are trampling on the the very philosophy of Hippocrates because he said astrology first and then you can call yourself a medic. <laughs> you know, don't put the cart before the horse. Well, yeah, that totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is why they're quite happy to just uh, open up, cut your body open and let you bleed to death because the moon is transiting the part of your body which above is the signs of the zodiac for instance if they are operating on your heart and the moon is in leo and in particular receiving a square from say mars or saturn uh rest assured you're not going <laughs> you're not going to make it home you know you'll re you'll, your corpse will remain there under the hands of the surgeon the idiot who forgets his hippocratic philosophy because he's too interested in 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 uh his uh uh, indoctrination you see and so doctors are killing people left right and center this is how they are capable of uh, prescribing medications to children like you know Prozac and uh, yeah give them give them Panadol uh, for their pain and and give them all of this allopathic uh, crap and uh, <clears throat> so this is how far we have, we have advanced as a race, you see, ignoring the spiritual wisdom that came down to us through the beautiful Word of God, which is astrology. And you need to be uh, a, a little bit inclined to etymology to understand that astrology is nothing but the Word of God. Astro equals stars, stars equal light, light equals God, Logos or Logi is the Word of God. <laughs> the Word. And so, you know, this is why Hosea screams out that my people will perish because of their ignorance. Yeah, I just want to back you up on that word thing as well, you know. Um, in as much as the words are the trap, they are also equally the freedom. You know, it, it, see, like a ch Chinese finger trap. 
very easy to get out of once you relax and understand how it works and just remove your fingers slowly. But instead, most people are desperate and they'll be pulling and pulling and pulling and the harder they pull, just like the fangs of a snake, uh, they'll embed deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Uh, something I touched on last night, and I want to share this with you because you know we've talked about this in the past, but um, it's 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 here. It is in a whole different light. Remember, we were we were talking about um, Admir- Ad- admiralty law is based on mercantile or mercantile law is based on what? What ancient culture? Phoenicians, right? Nine hundred years before Rome, they were the they were the traders. <laughs> Hear the sound of that, traders. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought I heard. Yeah, trader, Benedict Arnold style. But they were they were the traders of the of the high seas. And <clears throat> what what are words, the sounds of words called? Well, phonics, right? <laughs> phonetic. You got the and of course the phonetic alphabet. Um, so here here it is. Here's how the judges or the magi straits play the magic game. So I'm going to show you the trap, and I'm going to show you the the untrap. Uh, and I really wanted to get working on this today. Just it's been a day here, um, just garbage energy around here. But anyway, um, how, that's why I got to get out of here. Um, I just got to go. <laughs> I need I need to be able to think uh, clearly. So here it is. Whenever you say something, it can be assumed by sound alone, phonics that you're being phony <laughs> because you can walk into give me an example like any 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 fool can do this and I mean this literally you can walk into a courtroom and say I want my due process in law okay now there's a lot of assumption and presumption there you thought you said I want my due process in law which from your intention means that you want fair treatment you know to do this right well, I'm going to tell you what the judge heard. And you'll get your due process for sure. And he will stay in complete honor, giving you your due process in law. Because what he can assume he heard, because it wasn't spelled out for him, that's why they hate paper. <laughs> that's why I tell you, just documents, there's your intent. The words shaped the way they are and decoded the way they have been mean what you are saying in full intent. There can be no assumption in how you spell right, 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 or right. It's spelled out for them, so it's got to work, show and tell. Kindergarten, everything we need to learn, we learn in kindergarten. But I'll tell you what the judge heard. You said, I want my due process in law. And the judge heard, because he understands uh, deeper meanings, out of of models, you other words. Um, Oh, so you want your D-O, you want me to do, for tax process in law. Okay, I can do that for you. This is how it works. We rape you. And they do it in complete honor. Because you don't know you don't have a clue who you are and you're, you're just a babbling fool. You are rambling on. You are a babble on or a babble onion. Uh-huh. All right. So... This is why they will always nail you. And it's not about process. It's not about tricks and words and of, of of strategies on paper. And, you know, because this happened, we can do this. And this was a basis in law of that and all the rest. No, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got everything to do with the word and how it sounds. So Hooked by Phonics. There's another essay you should read. <laughs> Hooked by Phonics. It's on creativeguy.wordpress.com. Because I'll, I give a couple of examples in writing of what you thought you might have said, and I completely spelled it based on phonics completely differently. So I can assume and presume anything I want. And you said it, but it wasn't spelled out for me. So I can assume my own spelling, and I will cast my spell upon you. And then I will sentence. Get the words? I will sentence you verbally. And because you don't understand what I'm saying you're going to assume and presume that you have to go to jail. Nifty trick, huh? Silence is golden. Just wanted to throw that hooked in uh, by phonics and Nersanto. That's the true trick. It's not what you're saying. It's the sound. Under Phoenician or phonic law, 
that is assumed and presumed by the receiving party unless it's absolutely spelled out for them. So there you go. That's why reading documents in court, they hate that because it is on and for the record. They don't like that. And they'll end it real quick and get you the hell out of there. And they won't let you in. They'll just shut it down. But that's what you want. Shut it down. If it's shut down, and they can't cash out anything. It works for me. What do you think, Sano? Yeah, yep. I'm all for that. Shutting down this uh, beast. It is up to us now to shut down this beast. It must be shut down. Um, otherwise, what we'll continue to see and allow for prosperity, um, which we should be ashamed um, for having let um, our future generations or uh, the potential of the future going the wrong way, um, we need to just shut it down. You know, otherwise we will continue to see a world where um, priests are allowed to just rape little boys and say, oh, we belong to a church, can't touch us, that's pretty nice, and we're called Christians. Um, you know, and we can't have um, foreign agents um, who uh, have titles of nobility, i.e. attorneys, barristers, solicitors, um, turning over the free into their prison system so that it can generate a lot of income for the Pope, so he can rape more little boys. Um, and, and that's just all we're going to get, because that's what we're getting. And we're getting it rammed uh, up the behind, up our behinds, uh, you know, in, in a um, figurative sense. Of and, we're course, doing, every, uh, and we're doing it to ourselves. Yep. Yep. We have to shut that, the, you will shut that beast right down, right down. And, um, you know, do not participate in any of that shit, you know. I drive around with an unregistered car. Um, I do not have a driver's license. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't go into their courtrooms. I don't read their mail. Anything that comes to me uh, that's by any alphabet soup uh, gang, it goes straight to the bin. You know, I'd love to have a recycling thing, so at least I could, uh, you know, use it in the in the bathroom. You know that. <laughs> but I don't have any technology to do that. So, but if there's any way I can, um, you know, use it for hygiene hygienic purposes, uh, anyone know how to do that and turn government um, all government bits of paper um, into useful pieces of paper. Paper mache. Yeah, there you go. Do it. it. Make a nice sculpture of a bull. <laughs> yeah. And then send it back to them. Do it. Yeah. If you don't know who you are, um, then then you are allowing some uh, costumed uh, clown suit to from a, an alphabet soup gang to come along and just say, "Hey, you," <laughs> and and then. Just by saying, hey, you, um, offering you a contract to go into his uh, artificial jurisdiction, um, and you respond with anything other than, are you speaking to me and pointing to yourself, then, you know, you're an idiot. Because unless you pull that costumed fool back into your jurisdiction, which is your God kingdom... Um, then you're going to be going into some kind of jurisdiction where they can have uh, you know their way with you and uh, take you into their little cages. <clears throat> no worries about that because that's what they're on about. You know when they try to approach you and engage you in a contract and subtle are their ways to make you understand. Oh yeah, and. Uh... That's the whole thing. The only thing I suggest to people, Santo, to carry, um, and I actually insist that they carry a copy of it, is um, if they if they can have uh, both copies, long and short form. Um, uh, the long form is the fraud, and the short form is proof of the fraud, uh, which carries it <laughs> even deeper into uh, the deception realms. But uh, they cannot use it. Um, it's the only piece of paper the government ever gives out freely and willfully without anyone asking. 
oh, here you go. Here's your birth certificate. And, uh, and of course, we get aided and abetted by our parents to use a name that, that they gave away. It's not ours anymore until we know how to reclaim it. So the only thing I will carry is a copy of uh, um, it's a photocopy of a copy because you only ever get a copy of it uh, of the the birth registration and uh, so that's the only piece of paper it was ever received. Uh, I, I don't have any other contracts and I can't use this because it says I can't. <laughs> it's that simple because without you consenting to the name. In any contract, be it a license, uh, we covered the word license last night. Uh, it comes from licentious. <laughs> you know what licentious is, right? It's not. Yeah. A, it's not a good thing. It's uh, basically a depraved sexual uh, monster, uh, one of of criminal intent, uh, no moral standing whatsoever. So if you carry a license, that's what you're saying you are. Um, oh, and here here was the one thing I, you're going to find this absolutely fascinating. I know you will. Uh, the word I looked up license and wait to hear this. This is so funny. And I, and I tell people be very careful when you're reading things. Don't just assume anything. There's much more to it than meets the eye. So um, where was it? L I licitation license. Oh, here we go. And they've got lots of licenses, so implied licenses and everything else. Compulsory. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the the root word called licity. That's where uh, licentious comes from, or license, or licence, <laughs> which is uh, licity, which is the legality of an act, especially of a sacrament. I, even that word alone just says, uh, says so much to me. Um, but licity is distinguished from validity in ecclesiastical law. Although an act or some part of it may be illegal, now pay attention to that. Although an act in its entirety or some part of it may be illegal, which means it's all illegal, its performance or effects may be valid. See, there's your catch-22. Now, for example, Roman Catholic law requires that the Eucharist be celebrated with unleavened wheat bread. Now, if leavened wheat bread is used, the bread would be an illegal substance, but the sacrament's validity would not be affected. So what the driver's license, for example, is is somebody driving along in their system, and as long as you stay within their rules that they put down for you, those are the things that are valid. Everything else is criminal that you're doing, uh, but as soon, uh, or beyond their rules. Okay, If they set a rule, if you pass that rule, now you're, you're already a criminal with a license, but now the validity steps into play. You've went from... Le unleavened wheat bread to leavened wheat bread. See the allegory? All right. So, um, yeah, if you carry anything, a marriage license, a driver's license, a uh, fishing license, gun license, I don't care, whatever kind of license it is, then that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're stating very clearly that you are a criminal. Um, and, again, anything that you go out, out for in terms of a contract using the birth certificate, you've actually committed fraud of the highest order because you're using copyrighted material from someone that never gave you permission to. And that's the difference between us, you know, the peons, and the bar society because when someone crosses the bar, what they're given is the right to use the copyrights of their own name and of all the legal stuff and everything else. That's why it's only they that can talk in honor without committing fraud in a courtroom. That's why they made me be absolutely silent the last time I was in uh, in the courtroom. Because they didn't want me harming myself. And they were at such a touchy point that anything that they were doing, these guys were walking on rice paper the whole time. It was ridiculous to watch it. And it was just, just a show, but you could feel the fear just oozing out of each and every one of these fucking thieves. And that's all they are. They're just thieves. Because they know what they're doing. But they've been bought and paid for. They've sold their souls to the devil. Nothing I can do about it. Nothing I want to do about it. It's going to be up to them to make their path, to choose their way. If they can't, get the three, if they can't pass the first test of, can you be bought? Um, then they're done. You're done. So, anyway, I just thought you might find that a little bit interesting. Yeah, there are a den of thieves and a coven of witches. Mm -hmm. They've proven that uh, beyond um, 
you know, beyond the uh, the level that now we, we, there's enough evidence that uh, a good um, court can condemn the bar and the crown and all of these uh, soup agencies to. Um, well, they could condemn them to um, to closure forever, you know, forevermore, and they will be. Mm -hmm. They'll be foreclosed. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's only a matter of time and how good we are. And, you know, it's it's. Well, yeah, you, you under. I was going to say you understand how the cops get away uh, with uh, you know beating someone up in the street now, don't you? Because here's the thing. If someone doesn't know who they are, and this sounds cruel, but this is universe, baby, trying to wake you up. What you've got is someone that doesn't know who they are, are car is carrying identification. And you've got to really know who the hell you are. And it's very simple. I've just given you everything you needed to hear tonight. Everything. It is that simple. But you got to you've got to know it. You don't kind of go, you, you don't doubt it, you don't second guess it. You got to know this. It's fact. And the reason why they can get away with it is because we're dealing with a system of dishonor beating up dishonor. That's it. There's, see, there's no harm, no foul on each side of it in a universal sense. That's why it's critical for people to wake up. But there's nothing I can say or nothing I can do or will say or do to trespass on anyone's willingness to stay asleep. I will spend time on the air, and especially time with Santo, um, sharing what I know, and, and Santo will share what he knows, to get information out to you that'll resonate if you want it to but the problem with truth and here's the disclaimer and that's why i'm telling people if you can't handle the truth do not tune into this show ever again because i don't want you bringing harm upon yourself by denying it because the minute you know a truth and you don't stand in it universe is going to give you a universal bitch slap upside the head until you do stand in it you step off the mark universe goes and here's the other part of it, too. When you stand in truth, and I know you've been through the Mel Santo, so many of us have. When you stand in the truth, the universe does everything in its power to tear all of those attachments, dear eagle, away from you so that you can fly. It's painful. It's quite an operation, Pinocchio. You feel every one of those strings getting cut. But once they're cut, they heal instantly. Some might take a week or two. Some might take a little longer. Depends on how much wallowing you want to do in it. I know I've done my share. All right? But I assure you, you will feel every one of those strings getting cut. The universe makes sure of it because that's the lesson you learned. And that's why, like, Sonny, when you come on Friday nights and you bring astrotheology to people, it's a beautiful tool where they can learn to know themselves. I think that's fair. Wish I had, I got to tell you, Santo. I wish, I, I wish I had this show four years ago, listening to someone else doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> I can. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So it's all about standing in it. But um, yeah. So are you into doing a couple of readings tonight? Yeah. Yep. Could, yeah. Yeah, because I, I tell you, um, <laughs> more than anything else, I'm curious to see what kind of trend we run tonight. So I've got uh, I've got Ninja and I have Reisu, um ready to rock. Sorry, I muted myself out. This is the other thing too. Um, it's why I don't get. I, I I have absolutely no interest in talking about strategies in the system. There are none until people know who they are, until they know the fraud and know how to turn the table on it. You want to turn the table? Go to I who shall not be named. Take all the names that I've put in there out. Put your own in. Throw a little red box around it if you want. Fire that in on a parking ticket or a foreclosure. I don't give a shit. But put that in on the file. And then don't bother showing up. That simple. All right, Ninja. Open up your line there, hon. 
There you are. Hi, Kate. Hi, Santos. Hello. Any time now. <laughs> uh, you want? You, uh, are you ready to take some time and date and everything else, Santo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and enter. Uh, January fourteenth, right? Yeah. Nineteen sixty-four. Yeah. Trying to remember the time. Uh, Ten thirty a.m. Ten thirty a.m. As close as I can figure, that's what it is, anyway. And London. Yeah, in London, England. Right. So, fourteenth of January, sixty-four, ten thirty a.m. London. Yeah. All righty, so Capricorn, of course, but uh, well-placed Capricorn in the mid-heaven with the moon, double Capricorn, sun and moon in Capricorn, beautiful, yeah, that's just, uh, that's wonderful, that's lovely, you've got an ascendant in uh, Aries with Jupiter in the first house, so Jupiter in the first house by day, uh, hmm, I just... You, uh, there's not enough words to say how, um, for want of a better word, how lucky you are, you know, to have Jupiter in the first house. That That's the best placement in Aries. He loves fire, um, very comfortable in fire, um, and in the ascendant sign, so it's extra strong, and your and uh, Sagittarius, so Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Your Sag is in the ninth house. So, so you know, there's a, a strong connect there with your spirituality. So Jupiter, you could say, you could even put him in the ninth house, even though he's in the first, you know, because that's his true, true rejoicing home. And there it is, in the house of religion, spirituality, metaphysics, dreams, visions, all of that stuff that makes you a spiritual, that's your spiritual component. You send, the ascendant is the physical, right? So there's, a, there's a, a, a close connection, a strong connection anyway between the ninth house and the first house. They try one another. Same element is usually there. You see, your ascendant is in Aries fire, and your ninth house is in um, Sagittarius fire. The other fire sign will be Leo, and that will be in the fifth house. Usually, this is how it works. So, this triplicity of fire is usually dealing with you. It's the individual, uh, their physical nature in the ascendant, their emotional nature in the fifth house, and their spiritual nature in the ninth. So basically, yours is just dominated by Jupiterian energy. That's what I'm getting at here. Uh, let me just read. I've got to read this. You know, I'm tempted to move on, but <laughs> I've just got to read how nice it is to have Jupiter in the first house. So you can rejoice, uh, sister. If Jupiter is found exactly on the first angle, that is, on the ascendant, especially in the, is in the signs in which he rejoices... Aries, for sure, or in his own house or terms or in his exaltation, he will make the native high-born famous, always ruling great states, perhaps the first ten of the great states. He will also make him, according to the computation of the chart, virtuous, charming, benevolent, cheerful, rich, especially if Jupiter is in this house by day. And no malefic planet is in aspect. Well, you do have two planets in aspect, and they are two squares, one by the moon and one by Jupiter in the 10th house. So this is the house of career, honours, degrees. You've four planets in there. So, so far, with Jupiter in the first angle, and these four planets, Mars, Sun, Moon, and Mercury, in the 10th 
hang on, no, no, I make a mistake. Uh, I've got. Uh, let me just step back a little bit. Um, you have the Moon and Mercury in the tenth house. The Sun and uh, Mars are in the eleventh house. I made a mistake there. I wasn't paying attention. Your 10th house is very, very small. Due to what's called uh, refraction of the horizons, uh, when you're operating a Placidus system, some of the houses are bigger than 30 degrees. <laughs> so, But your 10th house is much smaller than 30 degrees. So I didn't pay attention to that. So the moon was right on the cusp and it was hiding the, the fact that the cusp was there. But anyway... The point is, the Moon and Mercury are squaring with Jupiter. Now, that's not good. Um, it's not bad, because, because you're lucky that the Moon and Mercury are in the 10th house, and because you want planets in the angles. So, that's good, but, but just showing that that greatness that comes from having Jupiter in the first house. You know, now... Jupiter is very hard to diminish his beautiful light. Uh, you would need both Saturn and Mars to do that, to really severely diminish him. The Moon and Mercury cannot do it together. So you still have a strong, strong... You know, even if I just stop the reading there, um, whatever else of nasties I find in the chart, just having Jupiter in the first house by day is so just unstoppably... <laughs> beautiful and successful. Um, Marlon Brando has Jupiter in the first house with his ascendant in Sagittarius. Very important because that's even better because Jupiter rejoices in Sagittarius on the ascendant. The man had nothing but success written on his path. You know, another one is Robert Plant, the lead singer of Led Zeppelin. Uh, Jupiter in the first house with uh, Sagittarius ascendant. Um, you know, just born to be a superstar, and and he did. You know, he achieved what many many singers would just dream about, and and how many how many followers of the band Led Zeppelin? There's never been. I mean, you get Elvis followers, you get Beatles followers, but there's never been a band that has bequeathed so many in terms of uh, so many copycats uh, in terms of pure genuine copycats as the band Led Zeppelin, period. <laughs> you know. So why? Because these people uh, you know, that have Jupiter in the first house, I'm labouring this point because it's just so, so gorgeous the theme there. You know. Uh and look, Mars the Sun in the eleventh house, this is great. Uh Mars in the eleventh house is beautiful because this is bringing friends into the into the light into the uh, into your life. A lot of friends, action in, to do with friends. A lot of a lot of action. Mars in the eleventh house indicates many good things: increase in income and popularity with people. Mars in the eleventh house. Why? Because <coughs> because it's the action hero. So in terms of friends, that's the best placement you could have. You know, Elvis Presley has Jupiter in the 11th house. No wonder he was given gifts and presents and buying cars and houses for his friends. You know, that tells you. Whatever's in the 11th house tells you how you treat your friends, you know. So this is a very active, friendly person. Uh, Ninja has lots of friends, you know, or at least uh, is able to have a lot of friends, you know. Uh, and the sun there, also in the 11th house. Oh, my goodness. It's too much good stuff here. When the sun is in the 11th house, the natives and their fathers are fortunate and hold high position. Their prosperity increases over time. The good fortune is even greater if Jupiter is with the sun or in trine aspect to the sun. No, there's none of that. But um, Jupiter is in the sign of the sun's exaltation, which is Aries. So he is giving goodness to the sun. That's how it works in astrology um, look a couple of negative things I must say um, you also uh, ninja you have Venus conjunct Saturn in Aquarius and I have that too and that's not good for the love life um, you know I mean it's 
sort of like um, it's a bit tough on your satin jumping on top of Venus like that is like it's really sort of he's cruel um, he's cold you know and he harms Venus and Venus absolutely detests Aquarius um, you probably have uh, knee problems later on in life I'll check the health in a minute because you do have two planets in the sixth house so I will do the health stuff but having Saturn conjunct Venus in Aquarius in the 12th house that's not at all going to be a good thing now that will be a, there'll be a knee problems for sure you know if you don't look after this and take perhaps uh, the cell salt for Aquarius which would be sodium chloride table salt I'd get into Himalayan, Himalayan uh, salt that's what I'd be taking that will help that and you can rest assured that it probably will be a chronic thing too um, after I've checked your, your general health thing here um, because Saturn is receiving a square in Aquarius he loves Aquarius receives five points of dignity there uh, so you do have a, an, uh, a dignified planet there essential essential dignities you, you've got a bit um, but it's accidental dignities which is the strength of your chart you know the accidental placement of these planets is just absolutely exquisite except for you know Venus and Saturn here um, and when you look at Libra which is in the seventh house which is your house of relationships marriage and partners and your Venus is the ruler of, of Libra and Saturn is the exalt the exalting planet of Libra and they are in a poor house a 12th, the 12th house which is the worst house in terms of energy in the chart it's the weakest and hiding more stuff than you can possibly hidden enemy there sorrow is there so what is Venus doing in your, in your 12th house you know there's some sorrow attached to you know the love life somewhere along your, your life I can work out whether it's the first or middle or last part but it's there um, this is what the 12th house means okay the 12th house signifies hidden enemies and deceivers and the envious and it signifies cows horses donkeys camels and all animals which are ridden and the like and it signifies griefs sorrows, wailings, weeping, lamentations, whisperings and the like, slanderings, prisons, evil wills. And Saul said that it signifies cunning and evil thoughts. And al Kabizi said that it signifies labours and bad characters. And it signifies the end of life. And what happens to women from the conception of a child and from giving birth, whether good or bad. And al Andavaga said, the first lord of the triplicity of the twelfth house signifies enemies so um, and the second labors and the third beasts and cattle so this is from the book of Bonatti the 13th century astrology that I'm reading uh, so you know hidden enemies all that sort of stuff is happening there deception from hidden enemies envious people trying to hinder your path that's all happening rest assured that's all happening uh, but the moon in Capricorn with the Sun up there and Mercury although retrograde in in the tenth house this will be promising for sure in terms of career and everything like that as for uh, as for health look I, I do see Pluto and Uranus in Virgo in the sixth house uh, they are very well placed in terms of um, aspects they are receiving trines but in the sixth house that energy is not really appreciated at all nothing in the sixth house is appreciated really no planets prosper and thrive there at all none of them not a one <laughs> you know it's not like other houses that at least have one or two planets love those homes you know so but what I normally look at when you 
when you consider the sixth house, don't just look at the planet that's in the sixth house and if it's badly aspected, declare that the person will have health issues. Don't do that because there's two other things at least that you should consider. Second thing would be the ruler of that um, house, which would be um, Leo because the cusp is pointing to Leo and the ruler of Leo is the sun. The sun is the 11th house. Um, can't go wrong with that placement, really. Even though it's in Capricorn, which is the uh, the sign of... Well, yeah, the sun does least best in Earth signs, and that belongs to Saturn. So... But accidentally placed in the 11th house, no problem. Not a problem. So the lord of that house, comfortable and doing strongly. So your health shouldn't really be a problem going by that. But then you can further deepen your studies and into health and look at the ascendant. The ascendant is in Aries, zero degrees Aries. Uh, fire then is... Um, the controller of your your body and health and <clears throat> and vitality and everything like that. So that's good. Um, I like when I see when I see um, the ascendant in a fire sign because I know that they have plenty of vitality. All things being equal, that person will have plenty of vitality. These are vital signs. You see, energy. It's high vibrating energy. The fire signs, <clears throat> the highest. And so, so that's good. But the lords of uh, fire by day are first the sun, then Jupiter, and then Saturn. So the first lord, the sun, deals with the first third of your life. So you would have had a pretty strong body, no problem. The sun's in the 11th house. Uh, but the good thing is the second, the middle part of your life, which is where you are now, being 49, um, you now are under Jupiter's um, dominion in terms of your body and your health. And look at him in the first house in Aries, the strongest, most dignified planet you have in your chart. And so um, the middle part will be fantastic. Uh, Saturn in the 12th house... I'm suggesting that uh, your health will diminish in the third part of your life because of that. So you, that, uh, but it shouldn't be too drastic. I have the same, exactly the same, exactly the same predicament because I have uh, the Sun and Jupiter ruling the first. I'm under Jupiter right now, and my Jupiter also is the strongest planet in my chart, like you, Ninja. So I'm enjoying great health. And the sun ruled the first third of my life, and that was also uh, in the seventh house, which is a strong angle for the sun. Uh, and Jupiter is also in the seventh house, which is strong. So good energy from my seventh house, which gave me good health for the first two thirds of my life. But Saturn is in the sixth house in my chart, indicating that's the house of illness, receiving a square just like you. Uh, conjunct Venus just like you in Aquarius just like you but opposite your 12th uh, house placement so both of us will need to be um, aware of that there's going to be a drop you know we'll, we'll, we will have to really look after our health but um, as for anything serious not a problem I don't see anything possibly you might have um, head or headache problems having, you know, um, those squares to Aries, but I will check that, actually. Jupiter, 12 degrees Jupiter, um, Aries. Yeah, migraines, probably, a few migraines. I could look Sounds at a few like other I medical... Had, I had the migraine when I was... Um um, about nine, but it only was like one or two days. I never had it again. Me too. When I was nine, I had one long, long migraine all day long. It was hell, and I've never had yeah. it again. 
Yeah. Mm. That's it. So we're we're very very lucky. Usually people who have planets in the middle dome of Aries, like self, uh, receiving squares. See, this is why Jupiter is so good in Aries. Um, and in your progress chart, you will have Jupiter there for a long time. You probably have Jupiter for the rest of your life in Aries. Uh, so you're lucky. I, I do. I've got in my progress chart of... If you want to see what you're going to look like in 40 years' time, just progress your chart by 40 degrees. So in other words, <clears throat> or, or do it by day, um, uh, just progress. So you were born on, what was it, the 14th of January? Yeah. Right, so if you went to the 15th of January, that's the first year of your life. If you cast a chart for the, the 16th of January, that is a progressed chart dealing with your second year of life. So if you add 40 days to that, your birth day, or 49 day, progress the chart, have a look at it. See what's going on. See where your Jupiter is. See if it's still in your head, in your cerebrum, in Aries. And you'll find that it is. And so it, there's another feature of astrology. You progress the chart. It's called a secondary progression. There's other types of progressions, tertiary progressions. Um, there's uh, minor progressions. Anyway, so when you do that, you can see how, how long these planets are staying in their respective position, right? The slower moon planets will be there for a long time. Now, the ruler of your chart, I'll do that and then uh, let you go unless you've got any specific questions. But uh, the ruler of your chart would be uh, Mars by virtue of the ascendant being in Aries, uh, Saturn by virtue of your moon being in Capricorn, next sign is Aquarius, that's the ruler, Mars again by being the closest planet to your sun, uh, your sun is in the 23rd degree of Capricorn. It is the indicator of your ruler. So let's have a look at um, the 23rd degree of Capricorn belongs to Mars. So there's three for Mars. The most dignified planet is definitely Jupiter. So you've got, you've got three... Mars is definitely the out-and-out -out ruler of your chart. You're very martial. Having your ascendant in Aries also indicates the same martial energy going on. Uh, Mars, is, Mars is it. You are here for action. And at that action will be um, directed toward your spiritual life because Jupiter in the first house is pointing to Sagittarius in the ninth house. And so there you go. Your north node is in Cancer, just like myself, because you were born a year after I, I was born in '63. So, so um, you know, the north node was still lingering around in Cancer. Wow, and, thank you and, very much. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. You're correct with the knee problems, but I don't have it anymore, and it only started when um, in 2010 in one of the knees, but I've actually not had any problems with that now for uh, probably about a year. So I managed to sort that out. But I do take the pink Himalayan salt as well. So, And I've been on the tissue salts, but that's more recent. And I took also uh, magnesium oil. I think it was the magnesium oil that, that got the knee right again, and then I started on the, the Himalayan salt. And, and so that's correct, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and look, um, a little bit of barefoot walking on dirt, which is the, creating the the electrical circuit for the sun's rays to be able to, you know, um, flow th flow the the electric energy to flow through your body through into the earth. You see, wearing shoes yeah. disconnects. Yeah. yeah, so do a bit of that for your knee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can I can I ask you if you can just go back to the to the twelfth hash issues? Did you mention about um, to, things to do with birthing can be mm -hmm. difficult? 
because I wanted to confirm that I heard something around that because I did have yeah. big problems after the the birth of my well, son, which was the cesarean section, and that was very, very problematic afterwards, and blood loss and infections and all sorts of things in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, look at this. Um, this is what Bonatti says 700 years ago. Um, what hap the, the 12th house is to do signifies the what happens to women from the conception of a child and from giving birth, whether good or bad, in parentheses. So it has to do with giving birth. Now, certainly, certainly the 12th house is it's a cadent house. Cadent means falling. It's fallen away from the angles, so far from the angles. The angles have all the power. The first house, the fourth, the seventh, and the tenth. Um, Firmicus says you wish that the, all the planets were there and you wish that no planets were in the 12th, 6th, 8th uh, and 2nd house. Now, the 8th and 2nd succident houses, they're not cadent, but they're still much more negative than the 9th and the 3rd, which are cadent, and they are put before the 9th and the 3rd in terms of badness and you know ill predictions. So it's, it's not all bad. You've got to understand, it's not like that but it's it's when you when you you go deep to look at um many um profound things indicators in the chart then planets that are placed in those cadent homes can only have you know um weak predictions they can only be weak they can't be favorable so and so yeah, that would have been your problems with uh, childbirthing, and the fact that uh, Venus is in the worst sign for Venus, Aquarius, um, and in conjunct Saturn, which is receiving a square, and that will also severely weaken this house, which has to do, of course, with all of those things, including the conception and, and giving birth, the whole thing dealing having to do with women. So, so there you go. You know, and there's there's how astrology comes to the rescue because women who, you know, look at that and and know that that's in the chart can be extra careful and take precautions. Uh, probably the worst way to deliver a child would be in hospital. We we know that. <laughs> you know, probably the best would be to deliver them in water in a pool. Now, you know, women that who was deliver. My plan. That was my mm. plan. I hoped for that, but there was no chance of it. I wasn't dilating, and I ended up as an emergency cesarean. So. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the world is not ready for um, things to be done properly, but uh, so we do have to deal with a little bit of trauma that comes from all of this. Uh, but further to... See, this is why um, my uh, concept of synchrota is so, so important because you can also um, look at the degree in which Venus is in. Now, I'll do that and let's have a look at the 26th degree of Aquarius. Now, see, that is, those degrees belong to Mars. That's the terms of Mars. So, now Venus and Mars in conjunction or anything like that is not really good for things all to do with Venus. All very good for Mars, no problem for Mars, but not for Venus because he's a malefic, she's a benefic. So he hurts her as Saturn does. So she is in the terms of Mars in conjunct with Saturn, she's hurt. Your Venus is hurting. Uh, you know, so it's 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 and she's not even aspecting at all with any planets. All the other planets are aspecting. Let's have a look at this carefully. No, Mars is also not a aspecting. He's all alone there. Interesting. So is no, they they are the only two planets in your chart that are not aspecting. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, that would all of that negative energy 
would contribute to that and everything else dealing with the 12th house uh, ninja. For instance, you know, hidden enemies and deceivers. And it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be necessarily aware of them, um, you know, uh, because they usually do things in a hidden way. These are hidden homes. It's not enemies in the, in the, in the light that, that um, these are hidden enemies. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I've never, I've never suffered with uh, face-to-face enemies in this life, so that must be the, the case. Yep. And yeah, that's well, about thank it. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really been uh, a privilege and a pleasure, and uh, I'll let let uh, you go and hopefully have time for someone else. Thank you, Vandal. Mm-hmm. Well, we got one caller here, and I have I given you Rezu's information. Uh, Bindi got in there just ahead, so I have to do things accordingly. But uh, if you could do Bindi's, and uh, we can get to um, Rezu or Rob, um, that would be great if you can do that, Santo. Yeah. Yeah. Still got a half hour, uh, and depending how much time you have as well. Uh, I'll have to go. Yeah. I kind of I kind of figured as much, but um, here I'll open up Bindi. So uh, Bindi, keep it uh, keep it short and sweet, and let's uh, let's get you done sure. here, hun. Sure, no worries. Um, 11th of November, 1971. G'day, Santos. By the way. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good day, mate. <laughs> Quite <Yeah. a> ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, 10 minutes to 10 p.m. in Perth, WA. 10, so 9.50, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Did you say p.m.? Yeah. At night. Evening, yeah. Yeah. 9.50 9.50 pm and, and and Perth, yeah. Perth, WA, yeah. Do you, do you? Oh yeah, okay. So uh, 11th of November 71, 9.50 in Perth. Here we go. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, uh, Grand Cross in your chart and Saturn in the 11th, Mars in the 8th. Uh, part of this grand cross in mutable signs. It's a mutable grand cross. Uh, And so, and it's Mars in the 8th, I said that, Saturn in the 11th, Moon in Virgo in the 2nd, and look at that you've got jupiter venus and mercury and neptune all part of the other uh um edge of this uh grand cross that is amazing all right so <clears throat> moon in virgo sun in scorpio ascendant in gemini wow there's a lot of mutable stuff going on in this chart you know ascendant in gemini Moon in Virgo, uh, and Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter in Sagittarius. So, yeah, look, you know, that suggests twins. It suggests uh, twin spirits. Um, a lot of twin spirits are born in, in, in uh, configurations like this. Uh, also, um, it also, you know, points to the sexuality um Venus and Mercury being so close together like that that's a little honey of a conjunction together with Jupiter that is a real beautiful conjunction um that has to do with charm and and magnanimity and uh uh appeal you know like charming personality and Neptune is not far from this it too it's it this is a whole bunch of, you know, really, really nice energy planets. Jupiter and Venus together and Mercury and Neptune. They all have... Mercury swings both ways. If he's with Venus, he'll do what Venus does. If he's with Jupiter, he'll do what Jupiter does. If he's with Saturn, he'll do nasty things like Saturn does. But when he's with good planets, 
he is like them. So you've got four of them lined up all along the fifth and sixth house there, which have to do with um, illness. Illness is going to be an issue in your in your chart, sister. What's your name? Uh, Bindi. Bindi, that's right, Bindi. Yes. Wow, it's a it's it's a day for um, um, you know, unusual names too. Ninja, Bindi, they're not usual, are they? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and and Rez is coming up. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, Bindi, um, so, but you've got the sun. You also have the sun in a beautiful place as Jupiter was in the first house in the last chart. The sun in the fifth house is just uh, magnificent uh, together with Neptune. It's a beautiful placement there. have to stress that because your... This... Con configuration or stellium that you have Jupiter, Venus and Neptune in the 6th house unfortunately they are in the 6th house which is the house of illness so um, you know it's, it is going to be a, a concern right uh, if it was if you were born say 20 minutes later it would have been in the 5th house and it would have had a totally different um, application you know or, or meaning in your chart and so you really, your chart accidentally didn't really take advantage of this beautiful um, placement. Nonetheless, it is, you, you know, your Jupiter is in Sagittarius, five points of uh, domicile. Your Mars is in Pisces, he's the night ruler of um, water, so he gets three points. So there is some essential dignity here, you know, there's... Eight points of essential dignity already there, uh, but unfortunately, this health thing needs to be looked at. Let me have a look at. We can probably go around this grand cross and have a look at the points. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do the medical stuff, or uh, would sure. you like to look? look? Sure, because I'm as healthy yeah. as I also always have been, so I'm pretty uh, curious where that leads. All right, well, your ascendant is in Gemini. Gemini is air. The lords of air by night are Mercury, uh, then uh, Saturn, and then Jupiter. So what you'd have to do is have a look at their uh, placements in the chart, and you'd have to look at their health. Now, Saturn's looking pretty good over there in the 11th house, luckily, because he's retrograding, so... You know, is is the only planet that's retrograding in your chart, and he's actually involved in the Grand Cross and in your health directly, because he's the second ruler of you know your ascendant sign. So um, look, yeah, I'll just say that probably just uh, be um, on guard there. So let's have a look at those points as we go around the wheel. Okay. <clears throat> I'll start with, uh, okay, Saturn in Gemini. Fourth degree of Gemini, pulmonary inflammation. Uh, the moon in Virgo, seven degrees. That would be hard. Appet pulmonary, yeah. No, appetite. All right. Uh, pulmonary? No, that's pulmonary yeah. is the lungs. Right. Okay, the first one. Yeah. Now that's a chronic thing. That's going to be a that that'll be a chronic thing. You yeah. know, it won't be something. Yeah, and because and look, I'd that'd probably the one be the one that uh, I'd be strengthening more so in your chart because it's re Saturn's receiving one, two, three, four, five. Uh, well, let's put it two squares and three oppositions. Those are negative uh, aspects. Uh, and that's the pulmonary inflammation, okay? okay. Lungs in inflammated. You've never had that problem? No, never. Beautiful. I've had uh, throat, throat infections, but never anything worse than that. Okay, um, Virgo, seven degrees Virgo. Uh, appetite. Uh, yeah, w w weight. Weight has always been an issue, but that's going since I've uh, been doing urine therapy. That's uh, like melting off, so I might be. Wow! <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah, um, I was, uh, miracle juice. 
Told you we have the most tuned in listeners on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Pneumonia, again, lung stuff going on here. Okay. Pneumonia, uh, 11 degrees. Let's have a look. And eye, eye stuff. Matters to do with the eyes. Weird. Yeah. Seven degrees. It's complete opposite of what I'm experiencing. Okay. Well, well... Well, have you? Did you say what was the time you were born? Did you say? Ten minutes to ten p.m. And you have the exact time, definitely, right? Yeah, that's what my mum said. So I checked. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ten minutes to ten. Well, that's what I've done. All right. Um, now, so and that's it. That's the health stuff. There's not much really. There's only a few points: the lungs and the eyes, and contagious diseases. I picked up there too. <laughs> Yeah. Probably, you know. That's... Yeah, I I can place this all in my childhood, Mark, more than than still to, than recent. But I'll just I'll keep uh, I'll keep that under uh, advisement. Well, yeah. Well, look, Mercury uh, the, again. See, you look at your chart. Mercury's in the sixth house, together with Jupiter, uh, and those are two of your indicators for your health because of your ascendant being in air. So, but Mercury is the first one. Mercury will definitely be the worst placed out of the three. So the other two are strong. Look, this is how it happens. <clears throat> um, if the first Lord is debilitated, uh, the native will suffer for the first third of their lives. Now, I've seen that in the case of many people. I've had relatives who have been sickly for many, many years and all of a sudden they've just like snapped out of it when they're you know, in their 20s or in their 30s, right? Early 30s. And that's because, um, rest assured, it would be because something has changed in their chart, one of the, the, the changeover of the rulerships of the planets. And, um, and I myself have found this in the charts of many, many people too. So, and you will have heard of it. You know, you, yep. we, 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 all, we all experience, experience this where people's health actually improves in the latter part of their lives. You know, and you see people who um, live to a long age and rather robustly, whereas they were very sickly when they were first uh, born, you know, and grew up very sickly with all sorts of things like weak heart and asthma and everything like that. Um, my uh, brother-in-law, my sister's husband, was like that. And, um, you know, he was sick, always sick sick when he was a little boy and now he never gets anything you know because the lord of his house changed rulership yeah right uh, 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 oh, yeah yeah <coughs> mm -hmm. any questions any particular questions okay let's have a look at the lord of the chart so the dominant planet here yeah. um my question would have been <laughs> Yeah, look, I don't know. I don't know how to give this because essentially, Jupiter is dignified by being in Sagittarius, but by being in the sixth house, he loses all of that, really. But nonetheless, he, he still is the best placed um, planet. Uh, yeah, I've got to do it. Got to go by dignities in preference to accidental placement, really. So there's, yeah, Jupiter. Mercury is also a ruler because your ascendant is in Gemini. Uh, also, it's the closest planet to your sun, so there's Mercury again. Your sun, your moon is in the seventh degree of Virgo. We need to use the moon for indicator because you have a night chart. So the moon in the seventh degree of Virgo, that belongs to Mercury. So you're all Mercury. It's all intellect and communication, and you're probably... Yeah, and Mercury being in the sixth house, which is the house of work um, and and service to others, you probably will be very good in a in a job if you're going to do that, <laughs> where mm. you can a a, a a career or or something to do with communicating to help people because of you know the chart. Venus conjunct Mercury is a charming thing uh, you know so you can be your whatever you say will be um, you know will be useful because it you know it will please <coughs> it will please people so yeah pleasing I'm, I'm, a special worker. Yeah. I, I'm I hear what you're saying yeah I'm also yeah. an artist so I Mar through 
various yeah, use the community. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. I have a strong, strong, um, intuitive connection with Mercury. Anyway, <laughs> it's one of the first planets. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. Yep. That's going on. Um, so, and since you've got an ascendant in Gemini, that also indicates, uh, you know, mercurial interest. This is a person usually who likes to, um, you know, think about hermetic themes because Mercury does incline one to, you know, uh, more towards um, unconventional <coughs> types of studies, esoteric, really, yeah. and 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 okay. yeah. and. In particular, when Mercury is conjunct Jupiter, I have a Mercury uh, Jupiter conjunction, and <clears throat> these are born astrologers. That's what Firmic, Firmicus says. Mercury conjunct Jupiter uh, makes astrologers. In fact, let me read that because I want to read <clears throat> also what it says about your uh, Mercury Venus conjunction there. Um, Many charming people that we know have this Mercury Venus thing. Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, uh, Casanova. He charmed a, a bunch of women, didn't he? Um, uh, a lot of <laughs> successful people in Hollywood and entertainers have this Mercury Venus conjunction. <clears throat> okay, so it's good for entertainment and showbiz too, you know. Mhm. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's have a look at Jupiter in conjunction with Mercury. So, Mercury. Jupiter and Mercury in conjunction make the natives powerful, outstanding in council and oratory, trained in all fields of learning and the objects of general admiration. They are particularly outstanding as orators for the fluency of their speech. Some, because of their intelligence and learning, will be in charge of royal letters and archives. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know. I thought it was Firmicus that spoke about astrologers. Uh, I think it's an, another one. Let me check. Oh, yes. Okay. If Mercury is joined with this is from Bonatti. Um, that was from Firmicus. If Mercury is joined to Jupiter, it signifies knowledge of arithmetic and of all things which pertain to number and the knowledge of writing beyond other writers. If he wished to study it, if he wished to study it, and philosophy, namely astronomy and other quadrivial sciences. There you go. Right. That's awesome. Except for the fact right. that I have this, um, I'm I'm uh, like word blind, but with numbers, so that's uh, amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's that's what the conjunction means. Um, yeah. Oh, we didn't we didn't look at uh, Venus Mercury. Now I'm a bit sort of uh, uh, where's Venus and Mercury? Venus and Mercury in conjunction make natives handsome and agreeable and attain all their wishes. Um, they are trained. I'll, I'll, there's there's a a little bit here where it talks about um, urges to bed many women. So that would apply to yeah to men. But this is what I was uh, saying before. It's, 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 yeah, it, but. Yeah, of course, it, what it does, what I'm saying, of, and what is being suggested here, is that the, that it does stimulate the um, the sexual desires. Now, Venus is sexual. You see, uh, this is where things like venereal disease comes from. It comes from Venus yes. and to venerate, etc. But Mercury is prolific. He travels around a lot, right? So he's running around every eight. eight um, days he does an orbit so like the moon when Mercury and the moon attach themselves to a planet 
they give them the sort of they add um, uh, new number to what that planet signifies. So you know, Mercury is sort of interested in getting around, <laughs> right? So hence Casanova. Um, he uh, he uh, um, he was boasting in his own autobiography. I think he boasted to have bed. Uh, I don't know. Whew, uh, I think it was three hundred women or something like that, right? So I that's what that. this. Now, now your conjunction is different because Jupiter makes part of it, and see, Jupiter is more sort of. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Jupiter is the great benefic, so this lifts up both Venus and Mercury to Jupiter's more sort of, uh, you know, honourable standard. <laughs> they are trained in speaking. This is what I was saying before. They are trained in speaking so that they always delight the ears of their hearers. Or they are successful musicians and singers or, singers or famous poets. So, so that's what um, Venus does conjunct Mercury. Singers, poets, um, you know, really sort of cr produces a sort of a bohemian sort of a, a musical type of person, right? So this is where the, the sexiness well, comes in too, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, 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 just, yeah, I just want to jump in here for a sec, guys. We've got about uh, 11 minutes here. And, um, okay. Next I wanna, uh, yeah, I don't want to rush you along. I've got uh, Ray Sue waiting, if you can do that. Plus, I have a caller. I'm just going to crack their line open quick. Thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, hey. no worries, Bindi. No, it's great. I mean, that's that's the thing about readings. You can go on and on, and they're fascinating. <laughs> they really are. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the caller. I put uh, the information in uh, our chat window in the call, Santo. So um, it's all there if you want to dig that up, and I'll uh, bring this caller in right now. Try to I, I do try to stay ahead of things, right? Nothing like producing and hosting shows. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, area code eight five nine. Oh yeah, hi hi Kate. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm uh, I'm good. Not well. I'll stay uh, neutral on that, but, <laughs> but I'm glad to be speaking with you anyway. Glad to be above awesome. ground. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to say uh, to say hello and to say hello to Santos. And um, uh, Santos, I, I know this is a lot of work to do these these readings, uh, and so I would like to. Uh, uh, I, I just uh, I'm, I'm the guy that uh, communicated with you on uh, Facebook on uh, Mr. Spiritual. Sprezzatura, if you remember that. Um, oh, oh, yes, Sprezzatura, yeah. yes, yes. Um, right, right. I, well, appreci that, that's, I appreciate yeah. that. That's very kind. <laughs> well, that's that's extremely rare compliment, let me tell you. That, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I used to, before all of this uh, consciousness started to expand, I used to think I was sort of like the sharpest blade in my, in my part of the woods. But the more, uh, the more that I... Uh, uh, geniuses like you two that I run into, uh, I realize that I'm quite insignificant and, and really know nothing. <laughs> so that's uh, <laughs> that's exactly how I feel, brother. And uh, that's a, a me, very me too. humble, humble way to be because we are forever returning to the knowledge that we once lost, and so we should always, you know, be uh, uh, you know humble enough to be able to accept learning from other people and uh, appreciate those words. Well, that's, uh, you deserve them. Kate, you deserve them too. But uh, as far as the reading goes, I, I don't want to take uh, take your time. I know your time's available. Uh, but actually, I would, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I would really like to... Uh, 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 to pay you for for a reading for you know a couple of readings, uh, man. How would I do that? How how would I uh, you know? Uh, um, yeah, just uh, send me another message on Facebook and I'll uh, um, I'll give you all the information that you need. Okay, brother. super, yep. super. Okay. Yeah, and and for for anyone listening, I, I know there's a couple of guys. I've I've got about three or four bookings of charts that I have to do and I will be leaving for Europe in 13 days right so but a couple of people have expressed their concern will you will you be able to do it yes I will I have every day free from now 
till then, you know. I'm using Good. it to um, prepare myself for the tour so that I can have fresh and new information, but I can definitely take time out to do, you know, chart readings if I have to do that. And some of these are bookings, you know, that I've booked a long time ago too. So, um, you know, I, I do... I do everything that's on the plate as it comes to me. <laughs> so you you actually uh, write 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 it out. It's been there to form. Is that how you do that? No, no. What I do is this, Rob. Um, I always uh, share my screen on Skype. So you, you need to be good with Skype. You need to know how to you know uh, pick up a link in the chat um, because I link give you links of things, information, stuff like that. So, And you need to be able to know how to, um, you know, expand the, scri the Skype uh, screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Because I like to show no. people, point to people to what I'm doing and showing them where the stuff is going on in their chart. Uh, so I don't write it out. I teach <coughs> as I go. So if you book, say, an hour... Um, I, for an hour, you'll be you'll be seeing what I'm doing with my cursor, and I'll be sh training you and teaching you how to do it. So that's okay. my yeah. way style. Well, I may be a little uh, behind the curve because I'm I'm not on Skype yet, but I'm 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 going to be just for this purpose. I'm going to sign up. Yeah, so. we can get get you included in uh, our chat rooms as well, and get you hooked in with uh, the rest of. Uh, uh, the incredible folks I get to hang out with. Yeah, sure. I, I look forward to it, Tim. Oh, yeah. You'll love it. <laughs> Promise. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your time. I think he was talking to you, Santo. <laughs> no, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, and ladies, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm still having to trouble. Apologize. No, no, <laughs> yeah. that's good. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I, I like to be a point of light that says, I just made your day interesting, and boy, made you look twice, didn't I? Yeah, That's, oh, there's no apologies needed for that. That's called awakening. It's beautiful. Well, wh whichever you're, an amazing person. So that's you know for what it's worth. <laughs> oh, it's it, right back at you. That's just your mirror talk. So, told you, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right on, eh? All right. Yeah. So, is this your chart? Is this your chart, Rob? That we have uh, 23rd of the of April? Oh, uh, that's Ray no. from from the UK. Oh, okay. That's Rez from the UK. Yeah. Rezu. Okay, let's do that one then. Okay. All right. Well, that's. I'll only have time for this though. That's the thing, uh, yeah, unfortunately. No but um, yeah. All right. So uh, here we have a. Um, a Taurian with descendant also in Taurus, but the sun is in the twelfth house, so it's really out of the ascendant. It's not in the ascendant, so you missed out on that by you know twenty minutes. But nonetheless, this chart is full of essential dignity. Really, uh, Venus in Taurus five points, Jupiter in Pisces five points, and Mars in Capricorn four points for exaltation. Uh, oh, and another five points, Pluto in um, Scorpio. So this is, you know, one of the charts that is just full of essential dignities. Um, accidental placements are pretty good too. Venus in the first house. Just like the first person we did today, uh, Ninja, um, who had Jupiter in the first house in Aries, which was a fav favourable house. This is Venus... In Taurus, um, in the first house. The uh, negative thing with that, though, is that it's a day chart. So Venus doesn't get all the goodies, doesn't give you all the goodies that she possibly could. If the sun was below the horizon, Venus in the first house, she'd love the dark. She, she wants to come up before the sun. She doesn't want to be an evening Venus. And look at the word evening. It begins with... Well, you can see the, the name Venus inside, hiding inside the word evenness, evening, right? Because she evens things out. She's the ruler of Libra, which evens the scales of evening things out. So this is the type of person that she's causing you to be, you know. Uh, beautiful to be in Taurus, just absolutely beautiful, uh, but somewhat diminished by being... Um, you know, in a night chart. Venus on the ascendant by night, 
It will make men of divine intelligence, friends of emperors. That's what you would have got. But what you get is just, you know, the good things that Venus does, uh, sort of not in her glowing, glowing brilliance, but you still get her goodies, you see. Um, so, and you have a very, very big, big 12th house, you see. This is because of, you must have been born high up in altitude, Where's that Rotherham in South Yorkshire? Yeah, right up there. Yeah, so because of, uh, again, refraction of the horizons, um, some of these houses are really, really big, which causes your... Ah, you might want to um, do your shout-outs and... Um, thank you. Every... Uh, great big thank you to criticalmassradio.co.uk, Paul Giovanni, Lisa, the crew at Critical Mass. Thank you guys so much for setting such a good table for us to be able to sit around and chat every night. Thank you. Carry on, Santo. Yeah. Uh, now, Jupiter in the... Let's have a look at the Sun in the 12th. I just... Ju... No, no, Jupiter in the 12th I was looking at. That's it. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately, you're not getting the best out of Jupiter either. Um, so... You know, there's there's hindrance and stuff like that. This is what happens when planets are in the 12th house. Now, you've got Jupiter, the Sun, and Mercury. Mercury is well-placed in the second house, uh, uh, in the 12th house. But uh, Jupiter uh, isn't, but being in Pisces uh, is giving him uh, strength. Fortunately, otherwise, you know, having such a great essential placement of Jupiter but accidentally placed in the 12th house is not you know, not the best best thing but uh, nonetheless uh, Jupiter is um, very very good in your chart um, you have Saturn in the 7th which is good for um, by day which is good for you know um, the long term Saturn is there to look after you in the long term when it comes to wealth. Uh, these people slowly accrue wealth, slowly build up their, you know, their um, their value, um, and that is also in, in terms of material things as well. Mars in Capricorn, together with Neptune in the ninth house. This is um, a very very spiritually activated person. Absolutely. It probably in an aggressive way, you could say. You probably would be inclined to, you know, um, you're probably a person who is known for, you know, um, their spiritual side, I'm sure. It wouldn't be hidden. It's not something that you keep secret. Can't be. Uh, now, ruler of the chart there would be um, mm, Mars. Venus, Venus also by virtue of your Taurus ascendant. Uh, let's have a look. Venus is in the first terms of Taurus. That belongs to Venus. So you got two Venuses, one Mars, Moon in Libra, two Mars because your Moon is in Libra. And uh, yeah. Share it. Your, your your chart is equally. I'd probably give it to uh, to Mars, the most dignified planet. But your chart ruler is Venus. She edges him out of the way. Three to Venus, two to Mars. But it's all Venus and Mars. Again, another you know another sort of a, a sexual kind of a combination. There, another another one. Alrighty. So, any questions? Uh, well, um, not that I'm getting, but um, great, awesome. Thank you, Santo. I know uh, we ran a, a little past the clock here for you. Um, always a pleasure um, on Friday nights to have you. I'd have you more nights if I could. Um, you know that. And uh, just another uh, reminder: I will be starting up tarot readings. Um, I'll try it out for a night or two and see how it goes uh, on Sunday night and more of the laid back sort of evening and uh, 
uh, saving that in case some major monster typical everyday epiphany shows up, which I'll share anyway. But, um, yeah, uh, thank you again, Santo, and uh, I look forward to chit-chatting with you. I would love to have a chat with you regarding uh, the last couple of uh, messages uh, regarding um, that, um, I guess, legal, whatever that stuff was, Um uh, uh, like the panel discussion sort of thing. Just yeah, to, yeah. I'll yeah. Ho- I'll hook that up in time. Just uh, give me a little bit of time. And um, Paul is eager. He's um, he's discovered something. He thinks you know it deserves to be shared. So okay. um, we'll we'll organise that. Thank you, listeners. Thanks, Kate. And we'll talk next week. Next week will be the last one before I do the tour. I am open to jumping on Skype and um, getting on the show if I'm available. Just you need to just keep skyping me. You know how it works. No, okay. I know. It's, and again, it's like it, it's it's uh, an open door <laughs> because there isn't one. So we just go with the flow, and and it's all good. Never. That's the whole point of this. There, there. This is about go and just let things be, and you'll be where you'll be, and I'm good either way. Fair. <laughs> yep. Thank you. All right, my friend. Much love to you, and thank you so much uh, again. Uh, Friday night syncretism with. Uh, Yours truly, Santo Bonacci. So thank you very much, and I'll uh, I'll catch up with you uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. All right, my Bye-bye. friend. Take care of you. Bye bye. Here you are, man. So there we go. Um, yeah, uh, another great night. So um, let's see, you get over to the board here. That's the thing about just sitting back. Um, <laughs> it's not a whole lot of work. <laughs> You know, just uh, letting Santo do his thing, and uh, it's always always great to hear him. I love uh, the readings, uh, specifically with with people. In that, you know, everyone has a different chart, but we all have a lot of the same things in common. So we can learn a bit about ourselves for the you know the charts that have things interrelating. Plus, the other side side benefit of it is, um, especially hearing charts from uh, people I'm acquainted with. Uh, I, I get a, a chance to see how even closer how charts interact with uh, with people, and and of course when you're dealing with real live experience, um, you you get to see it in action. So it's it's really cool. So um, uh, with Ninja and Bindi's charts in particular tonight, I uh, I was not surprised in the slightest, and I had a couple of chuckles too. So it was really you know alongside you guys, it was great because yeah yeah. <laughs> Bingo! Isn't that funny how that works? So uh, it, it's neat because you get that uh, confirmation of self and you get to delve a little bit deeper into yourself and I get to experience the mirrors and the perspectives of others through the charts. So it's it's a win-win, you know? Most definitely. <laughs> yeah. And just to let people know, the lines that I've opened are still open, so we'll make it a, a bit of an open forum here and uh, uh, see what pops up. And uh, Cindy, we got you in the call here. Uh, how are you doing tonight? Hello, Kate. I'm doing. I'm doing wonderful. And uh, I, lo- I absolutely adored this show. This was really, really, really wonderful because um, over the past week, Santo and I on the side have been working, doing this very same thing. I'm learning so much in the process, um, just in reading the charts. But um, we're looking at all the. Um, um, Oh, famous criminals, famous musicians, and just pulling up um, whoever we can think of, and 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 he, he's on a on a chart roll right now, and, and it's showing, and it's really um, awesome because it it uh, sparked my uh, you know I've been reading my own chart and, and other people's, but as far as just being able to look at it and um, to talk about it without having to look up the di- what the different meanings are, that it's really it's it's really becoming a lot easier for me. So I'm absorbing this by osmosis almost. It's really I love it. Yeah, it, and that's the thing too. When you you get to actually this is the thing, guys. When you get into actually doing something and you start mm-hmm. making it part of your routine because you're actually interested in it, your learning curve goes exponential and uh, your knowledge curve acts accordingly. Well, I made a comment once before. I forget who was on the call, but it's like this: you 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 look into yourself and you start learning how to read your own chart, and then you get really good and drunk on yourself, 
and then you start your curiosity starts turning to your children, your family, your friends, the people around you. And and um what's funny is I had some company in my house the other day and they li- they're listening to me, you know, talk about all this stuff all the t- all the time, all the time. Well, and they actually asked me to take them to the computer. Two two friends, um just mutual friends, a young girl and a young guy. And um you know, she's married to another uh, but this particular guy is just a really good long-time childhood friend of hers, and they were born, um, they were born uh, close to the same town, the same year, the same month, and it was really interesting. I pulled their charts up from; they were almost exact mirror opposites of each other. It was really fascinating. So now they are on the astrology kick, and it's, uh, these are just these are just friends of mine that listen to me babble on and babble on about the truth and. You know what? You know what's really going on, and um, and they're biting on it. They, you know, they they're curious now. So, and uh, um, we had a get together last night for Fourth of July, just a few friends over at this woman's house, and a whole group of people <laughs> started talking about it. And I told them with websites to go to check it out. So it's it's um it is like a, a tidal wave. Jump on it and ride it. <laughs> See, and there's the good thing about these uh, corporate parties for the corporate slave citizens, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in that it um, is a is a part of a quote mind control end quote by habit. It's also a beautiful opportunity. Here's the here, that's the evil. Let's go to the good, where you get an opportunity to sit around with people you don't normally see, and you get to plant all these glorious little seeds. Yep. 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 <laughs> oh yes. Fairy dust. <laughs> Fairy dust. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yes, yes, yes. So it's just been a wonderful, uh, wonderful week. Wonderful week. And yeah. Uh, wrapping up nicely. So um, uh, I got to say, since the the solstice and the and the super moon, there's been a, a pretty. Mm, I would for for a few days, and we're in Mercury retrograde. So I've had all kinds of stuff. Two cameras broken. SD card. <laughs> And computer glitches out the wazoo, but actually, I just made my mind up the other day. You know what? I'm just gonna ride this and not worry about what breaks because whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. Now all of this stuff is just coming to me. So much, so many, so much stuff is happening all at once. By the way, my brother will be home Tuesday. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So we are finally almost finished with this, and um, yeah. so. It's all good. It's all looking good. So good Japan, sake. here we come. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, you finally got word. Good job. Yeah, finally. Right on. Um, were you were you catching the first part of the show tonight? I caught. The, I came in at about fifteen minutes in. So yes, uh. I did. I did. Um, I had just walked back in from the store and uh, sat down. I think I missed the first. 10, 15 minutes of it, but I was listening, and I, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because w- one of the things, um, this is all part of the synchronicity, right, uh, of all the different layers working together, and as the astrotheology is the as above mirror to the as below, um, mm-hmm. which is a physical representation of the physical fact, um, you can take the spiritual aspect uh, from it as well and see how the cause is working. And um, it's w- one of the reasons why I am, like, I'm honestly, I'm going out of my mind trying to get people to grasp what it is I've been saying for the last couple of years. Find out who you are. <laughs> you know? Find out who you are. Yeah. Uh, well, I was I was speaking more in the in the fact that you're not the name, but yes, that's exactly. Uh, exactly. It. See, I am. Yeah. I am that I am. Yeah. He, he, he know thyself. Thyself. thyself is not a name. Here's a here's a couple. You've heard me mention Epimetheus and Prometheus before. Yes. Okay. Well, Epimetheus, just to give people some background here, Epimetheus and Prometheus, of course, were you know mythical brothers, and uh, were given the task of assigning different things to all the different animals and what have you on the planet. So Prometheus figured, oh, I'll leave it to Epimetheus, uh, no problem. So Epimetheus went about and course, acting without thinking, just went blah, 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 blah. when it came to humans, well, there was no fur left, there was no fangs, there was no uh, horns, there was no armor plating or anything. All all the inventory had been used up, so man was left as this naked beast, as it were, um, with minimal hair protection, of course, going to be cold in the, in, the, in the cold climate. Prometheus, having seen this, uh, thought, oh, okay. Um, so, uh, in order to fix things, uh, as the myth stated, Prometheus gave 
mankind fire to keep warm. That was an allegory. What Promethean fire is, is knowledge. That the Promethean fire is, is, is the knowledge of the tree of life and, and, of course, the tree of knowledge. But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's have a look at the, uh, the breakdown of Epimetheus and Prometheus. Because when we have first glances at words, we just kind of, oh, it's Epimetheus and Prometheus. Well, let's have a look at it just real quickly here. Just yeah, to sh- show you a little something that, you know, you may not have noticed. Um, what does Epa or Epi uh, mean to you? Epi? Um, hmm. Well, you've heard of, you know, like an epi- Epidermis is what I think of. But, I mean, but I know the dermis is your skin, so the outer. Okay, so what is the epi? If it's you've got the, der- the, the dermal layer and you have the epidermal layer. So where is the epidermal layer located? Oh, so it's inner? Well, it's under, right? Under, under, okay. It's okay. below. So, like, uh, the epicenter. <laughs> ah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the epi for injecting, of course, because exactly. you have to go under the skin. So we have epi as under. So, and, of course, in Latin, pro means four. Or oh, four. Or four. Here we go. Uh, so let's have a look at epi or epa me theos pro me theos. <laughs> Get Beautiful. it? Beautiful. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. this, this me is me God. <laughs> yes. This, either you're for <laughs> you're for yes, it or you're under it. Under it. Yep. Mm. So you you make your choice, right? And of yeah. course, in order to be for God, you must be the one to think first, then act. Because by one's actions, one is known. And if one is acting first and thinking later, well, then one is under an illusion mm-hmm. of God. And that God is an external one, right? That's right. So there you go. There was just another, I just throw these little tidbits out so that people start listening and mm-hmm. slowing down when they're, yeah. when, when they're speaking. And uh, as I was saying earlier in the show, when you put go and tell together, boys and girls, kindergarten, um, which is Judge Bow's day, that's what I did. I put my words down and I spoke them. Yeah. And that's, there's no wiggle room there. There's no assumption and presumption. Better buy out, bow out, buddy. Take a run. Yeah, and he did, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's funny, I was listening to a, a portion, someone had sent me a link to an interview that uh, Dean uh, Clifford had just done with, uh, uh, it was on Truth Connections, I believe. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the judge vows came up. Someone had called in about it, right? And mm-hmm. even even after all this time with, you know, how long I've known Dean, um, you know, I, I will say right now that um, although he has a reasonable idea of what happened, um, his assessment was completely inaccurate. Oh, really? I did not hear that show. Yeah, so, well, and no uh, harm, no foul to Dean. Cause yeah. I, you know, I really haven't, you know... He, he had, a, he had a, a rough idea, but again, as I was listening to that show, all I was hearing was regurgitated court puke. Okay, yeah. Re- regurgitated system think, system speak. No understanding mm-hmm. of what's really going on. Still trapped in the illusion of the name. Still trapped in the illusion of physical, um, you know, gimme gimme land. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I mean, I'd, I could sit in on anyone right now and absolutely shred any sort of legal argument they have. Because as soon as they open their mouths about what they're going to do, I don't care if it's contract law, trust law, I've done all that shit. UCC, yeah. all of it. I've been through it all. Mm-hmm. Okay? You know, I actually read a lot of stuff that I understood mm-hmm. from a lot of people that are very difficult to understand. And that's where I pulled all this stuff. Where do you think this information comes from? Right? I mean, this is, I'm, yeah. and I'm going back three, three years ago. So the, the fundamental thing is. And, and this is the whole argument that people have. They're going in trying to be fighters and belligerents and all the rest of it, but they haven't got a clue who they are yet. They're still dealing in the physical game. They're still caught up in the illusion. And in, I, I don't care what anybody says. If if you say that you're not part of the system, and uh, again, this is a no harm, no foul. This is an observation. Do not mm-hmm. turn to me and tell me that you're not part of the system while still maintaining, you say you've got no ID in it or anything else, but you're still maintaining a prepaid visa card. It's got a name on it. It's ID. It's still fraud. True. Okay? Even the use of cash is fraud. Yeah. <laughs> this is the whole thing. They've got everyone using fraudulent currencies to keep you in fraud, to keep you clinging to it. 
So how do you step aside from that? Well, it's simple. You just got to turn the tables and let them know I'm onto the fraud. You guys committed it. How are you going to fix it now? Mm-hmm. How are you going to re- how how are you going to give back all that energy that was stolen through deception? Because we got to go back to nunk pro tunk now for then. Yeah. This is this is my next and final step. Nice. Just to see. Well, it's beautiful. Your work is amazing, Kate. It really is, and um, and and I sure hope more people can can take the time to read it because uh, it's an eye opening. Uh, excuse me, an eye popping opener. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's as simple as this, guys. And anyone that's got any anyone listening, if you, if you've got any legal issues, okay, if you're still you know, stuck to the name and and you know you, Pinocchio still got lots of strings on him. That's what your idea is, puppet. Uh, then fine. Well, let me give you something that is a, is a chainsaw to the system strings to you, and that's I who shall not be named. Read the damn thing and understand what it's saying. This is exactly what Jesus did when he walked into the temples. He he turned the tables on them. He kicked them over. And you're still dealing with the same scribes and five row C's. Okay. It all comes back to that. It's still the same game. It's all allegorical. Just bring it into the now, and you'll see it. Everything is now. And like I said, there are no history books and there are no prophecy books. Everything is right now. Whatever you're seeing, whatever you're reading, albeit in the past because if your eyes are open, you're in the past. You're seeing what was. You'll never see anything as it is unless you close your eyes. That's your that's your reality, right? That's the only one that exists in the now. Everything else is illusion. It's past. It takes light time to travel to your eyes. I don't care if it's tip your nose or a star a million light years away. It still takes time. You're seeing it as it was, never as it is. So get in the now and start understanding that. And more importantly, once you're in the now, now you can move into the preset and start creating your, your reality for you. And uh, it's one of the reasons why uh, the energy uh, from one individual here has just got me so distracted I need to get the hell out of here um, because getting and of course trying to bring these shows to people and 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 share the things that I that I'm seeing in the present when I'm distracted, it's not quite as easy. So it's uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and hang out with uh, with Vicky tomorrow for a little bit and uh, see where I go from there. Um, it's gonna be an interesting uh, interesting weekend. There you go. But, uh, yeah, uh, jump in, guys. Feel free. Questions, answers, whatever. Doesn't matter. I thought, I thought the, uh, who, I'm, I'm not sure who that is, the other caller that's on. Um, uh, we, we have Rob on the line. We have Bindi and, and Ninja's line still open. Anybody else, you know how to do it. Uh, tag me in the Skype room if you don't know how to open up your dial pad. Uh, I'd love to have you jump in. And uh, let's keep this keep this rolling, you know. Bendy and Ninja, your your readings were awesome. That that was really really cool to listen to. That's yeah, a pleasure. Oh, and uh, another thing too, um, what uh, Ninja just put down here as well. Uh, absolutely, Epi in Greek meaning over or upon, right? Everything means it's uh-huh. equal and opposite. Yep. Hm. That's so, what I did I, with this, some of the reading as well. I put it yeah. in the mirror and saw exactly what was in red. That's all you got to do, you know. It's oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, just put it in the mirror. I mean, yep. I, see, that's the only time I I ever get lost for words when when it's so obvious. It's like, why am I saying it? <laughs> I've been saying it for so long, you know. It's like it's an automatic. Yeah, and I, it's like mirror, mirror. Do I have to keep saying that? Mirror, mirror. Um, if you want to see the world, if you want to, if you want to slay Medusa, you're not going to do it looking at her square in the eye. She's going to turn you to stone. Okay, Perseus, so pick up your fucking shield and reflect. Nice. Take her head off in the mirror, you morons. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that because I was a moron for a long time. I get it, you know. I'm guilty. So, yeah. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. See, so okay, so who's guilty now? No one. Nobody. Well, 
we're all still here, so <laughs> Yeah, we um, do this together. <laughs> as soon as <laughs> as soon as you can shimmer out <laughs> no, okay. No, okay, you you figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> we're all still here. <laughs> so yeah. you know, it's time to redirect this movie that's been directed for us for so long and you know, let but everybody, let's you know quickly stare at all the illusions, all the rubbernecking distractions. Uh, you know, you're the resistance to fear porn. You know. <laughs> no. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it still hurts to do it though. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm only good for maybe two of those per show. So anyway, but you get the point, right? Keep it light, keep it fun, and and. Uh, I uh, uh <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we love you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and what you said that. earlier on about the uh, strings being cut and that you feel them? <laughs> well, mm-hmm. I've had my share of uh, cut strings today. Yeah, <laughs> but I will tell you, yeah, you, 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 you soar a whole lot easier when they're cut. Yeah, that too. Uh, you bleed a while first, though. <laughs> well, absolutely, you bleed. Um, and Damn guess shit. what? Yeah, guess guess why people have such a hard time with it. What do you mean? I don't get my 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 Cheerios in the morning with with cream and sugar and 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 strawberries and and spoon fed to me and get my bum wiped anymore? Well, sorry, you kind of have to be all grown up. Yeah, well, they're they're the kiddie pool strings. I'm more about the the relationships ending and friendships and actually being rubbish and you know those illusions. They're the harder ones. The 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 food stuffs and oh, that's just a kiddie pool. I don't mind that so much. But ah, oh, today I just got stabbed in the back by a couple of friends. I oh, I get, I get, <laughs> I get, I get, I get that daily. Damn yeah. You know, I get, I get it daily. Yeah, I mean, I gotta tell you, how bad does it get when the when the being that 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 you you went out of your way in so many ways and cost a lot of money too, guys, by the way, to have this being, uh, you know, that lives in the same place as I'm walking to go get get my car from the back parking lot. She's walking up and she can't even look at me. Mm-hmm. What's that all about? Well, I'll tell you what it's all about. It's all about guilt. It's all about Oh, what what have you done to me? I already know because the grapevine always gets the information back to me, you know. And knowing the the history of this individual and uh, and what have you, um, it, it's not surprising, you know. Anyway, I can get into all sorts of great details and what have you, but it's it's irrelevant. It's just it's so absolutely childish. Yeah, it is but, beyond so- childish. It's also sometimes I think a reflection of um, without one sound arrogant or like I'm there because I'm I'm not shimmering out I'm still here so it's 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 a it's one step for small small step for man but I think it's also a reflection of if your if your frequency raises some people just drop off. Oh, this <laughs> one yeah radar. yeah this one is definitely they, off the radar. From one day to the other they can look at you and think who are you and most of the time I look back and think the same thing. You know. become. And that's the thing too. I, and I know I I am an extremely difficult mirror to look into. Um, well, then don't look. If you can't handle yourself, don't look. That's one of the few I keep my eyes open and no, no need to blink. So there's the other yeah. side too. You know, and, and I promise you, uh, because no one has been harder on me than me. And if you think I'm going to treat you any less than I'll treat myself, think again. Because I cared enough about me to do it for me, and uh, here, here's the bottom line: if you don't want truth, if you don't want, if you don't want freedom, if you really don't, are happy in this quagmire and all the rest of it, then do not. I repeat, do not hang out with me. Do not even come on to these shows. Do not converse with me because all I'm going to do is be a mirror. Yep. Okay. You know, I, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm not much of a cleanaholic, thank God. But I have to say, the one thing I keep spotless and shiny every day is your mirror. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yep. You know, it's um, again, it's everyone's so busy talking about everybody else's house, and uh, they're you know, you go to their place and it's a pigsty. I'm talking metaphorically of the body, you know, and 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 the condition of of the mental state and the soul and how much ego is is still in complete control. I mean, you know, for it takes a lot of ego to not look at someone. And that's only because you cannot confront that which you have done to them. You see, someone that that it is trying to uh here's the mirror. So you will you don't avoid anyone because of something they did to you. You avoid them because it's something you did to them. And you don't want to confront that in yourself. So when someone comes to you trying to make amends, open your arms. Yet how many times? And that, that, Again, this is, for me, it's all about, well, what are we dealing with? What what. Is, is there something I've done um, that I'm not seeing that I need to be aware of? Please tell me. I have no. I'm, you can't offend me in this. It's, let me have a look at it and and go from there. But you you know the the vast majority of people can't even get to that point where they'd rather wallow in the uh, the self pity, the victim, and and uh, oh look what you did. Or you know I'm I'm getting even with you and and vengeance. It's basically that's all it is. It's a vengeance um, program running. Why? What 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 good is that energy? What good is you know that's uh, as we used to refer to it. I call that dumb energy. You know, it's 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 there's no point. You cannot converse with it, and it's pure ego. It's pure program. You know that is a big wall of shit to try to scra- scrape through to get to the being. Um, I wish you the best of luck because that kind of shit has to be cleaned by the individual themselves. You're not getting that off their window. I mean, I'll take a chainsaw to it, but they'll just keep adding to it, right? So oh, this the, is why. Oh, go ahead. The only part I'd chainsaw off is the part that they're trying to stick onto me. That's all. Oh, the yeah. Rest, shit. So try to hinge the responsibility onto me? Snip, snip. Oh, absolutely. Rest, yeah, that's, that's the biggest lesson here is that every time someone does stab you in the back, let it go. Probably... Well, a dead well, cadaver you're around anyway. Yeah, well, I'll, gi- I'll give you an example. Um, this individual uh, was quite content to uh, sit on her ass all day playing Mahjong uh, while I was still in the tent and everything else, made sure she was taken care of. Um, lots of mileage, by the way. Didn't didn't get offered a nickel when the engine went. That was I got actually got a giggle out of her. That was nice. Um, you know, and uh, to the point where, one, I, I'd already basically used up any resources I had and of course um, this individual and another one when when they came to the reservation last year uh, basically cleaned me out of any cash I had got you know no one else was buying food right so and of course they didn't come with anything so it's like okay great here we go again Um, you know let's just empty everything I've got nothing left so let's just take it right down to nothing you know Um, Including for me. So, and then of course, um, I do the once over, once up, once down, and listen. And of course, coached her right through. There, she's a job that she takes one minute to maybe a minute and a half to walk to, and uh, she's actually making more than she was working where she was for 15 years, uh, to the point where actually uh, the the pittance that she uh, pays in terms of board here, which is peanuts. Um, is actually less than the extra that she's getting what she was making before. So she's actually in a better environment. So, uh, and of course, uh, that all gets turned around. Never mind uh, the, the the numerous trips, i.e. And I'm talking one day that was oh, well, it was just over eight hours of driving um, to get her sorted out, and then have to do it again. I, three times I did it, and that's is it. This is it. This was the last stop, and. Uh, and, and now I get word back through the grapevine that uh, she, this is the, being told to, you know, take care of yourself. Okay. Listen, sorry, we can't carry you. We're having a hard enough time carrying ourselves. Meal tickets, okay. rhythm. You yeah. know, we do this. We do this together. Okay. Uh, turn the mahjong off and and go do something. Okay, and that was the main reason. This was one of the individuals that uh, I was looking at getting getting. Uh, 
a house rented. Uh, Victoria had a, a, had arranged some stuff, and uh, she was going to be there. In it, but there was no way. One, she isn't going to, you know, can't drive a car. Doesn't know how to drive one. She's never had kids. Never had it. You know, does no concept of responsibility, uh, except for herself, and that's quite quite evident. Um, you know, this isn't all about me, right? And uh, you know, sure, I'm you know going to get somewhere, and, and then I'm going to be the one to take you uh, to to work every day and back. Sorry, what would your last slave die of? Fucking stupidity, you know. But anyway, uh, long story short, the word comes back to me, um, you know, a number of days back, about a week ago, I guess now, and that uh, uh, she's uh, out there spewing that uh, she had to go out and, you know, you know, go find a job so that she could support me and Eric. Do you see what I mean? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this and threw it back in your face. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm just kind of I'm just sharing it with the world now. This is what I'm dealing with on a daily basis. Mm. She sneaks in out of the house. It's just sick. The thing is, Kate, you couldn't have made that up. No. You couldn't even imagine that shit to make it up. No. So it has to be it has to be true because no one's got that level of, you know, unless it's in them. Oh, Oh man. You know, um, I, I can get into some other real nitty gritty details, but I'm not going to bother. Just it, it's not worth it. But it, it, I got to tell you, um, cleaning up after people and uh, someone that won't even lift a hand to do dishes, uh, vacuum, clean, leaves messes for others. Um, I mean. <laughs> It, it, and it's ongoing. It's ongoing. And of course, the hey, energy. Lindy. <laughs> you looking for a house, mate? <laughs> what, mate? <laughs> you looking for a house, mate? You don't want that one, do you? No, 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 no. I've just got rid of the slob. Oh, thanks. <laughs> God sake, yeah. I just got the whole house in one week, and she came by today, and she had to wipe her shit off on me. Jealous. She just ah, oozing. You know. Okay, enough, enough following. Right. <laughs> anyway, I'm just so I'm just letting you know. I, and all through this, I'm still bringing the stuff to the table. Yeah. Now, can you imagine if I'm actually in a happy space? <laughs> and no, and Eric's great. Don't get me wrong. Eric's awesome. If you're connected to source, these people can't break you or bring you down. They can only temporarily sidetrack you. Yeah. Well, right. I'm just I'm just sick of the 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 puke feeling. Anytime I'm in yeah, the energy. There's only so much anyone can take and that, yeah, you know, I, we all have our breaking point. Yeah, I'm at it. Yeah. So and uh I tell you, there's a thirty two hundred kilometer trek that it's looking really, really, really nice right about now. <laughs> that's that's running the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed. Yeah. So I'll be having a little chat with Vicky tomorrow. Well, I hope you enjoy your day tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And every day. Yeah. I mean, there's a nice little place, and it, actually in that village, I have no idea how much it is, but uh, of course, I'm no condition, no position to do it, and I won't. Um, I'm at the mercy of the universe right now, and I'm okay with that. Put it out there, Kate. It's already out. Oh, it's, uh, it's put it out there, and it's it's going to happen. Already. Oh, it are, that's already under uh, uh, underway. I already know that. Yeah. How? I don't know, but I just feel it. And, uh, you don't need I, to know how. Just just know it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, a day in the life of Kate. <laughs> you know? A day in the life of Kate. How do you like it? Isn't it great? <laughs> it's a real reality show. This mm-hmm. is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. So that's... Uh, and Well, there's the, the basis of the whole rescue program of what was the real motivator. So a lot of good things came out of it, and that was the biggest lesson of all. Stop rescuing people. Especially people that as soon as you do will turn around and stab you in the back. Numerous times. Not just once. <laughs> you know? Yep. It's crazy. You know, and, uh, you know, based on a few things that I've, I've looked at, um, she's been very busy. You know, uh, the last comment she ever made in uh, in the chat room was, an elf came to visit me today. And I'm thinking, came to visit who? That was the Black I remember that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Black Slaw book that came, that was delivered for me. And uh, But if you read the post, it was everything to do with her. And that's that's what she is. She's a claiming coat tailor. 
and that is a very pitiful state of being. And there's only that's why I hate pedestals, because as soon as as soon as uh, the, uh, the only the only way a, an ego can can build or take down a pedestal or or to appear stronger than others is to build build a pedestal for them and then knock it out from under them, right? And that's exactly uh, another one of the programs. I mean, she's got she's got the gauntlet running with her, you know, thirty four going on eight nine maybe. And I'm I'm being kind. <laughs> it's just sad to watch. Yes, it is. You know, so these are parts of our consciousness that, that I can concern myself about. And that how the hell do you heal that? And of course, you know, it's although it's it, it's it's a sliver, it's still a reflection that I have to look at and go, no, that's not something I would do. No, 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 can't do that. No. So it's a it's a beautiful contrast. But I'm kind of sick of looking at it because I already know it's not something I would do. It's like you know, I uh, let's just say everywhere I've ever ever been, I always bring abundance to others. Always, it's always been that way. And the old saying, "Always the bridesmaid, never the bride." But now it's uh, time to be the bride. Yeah, marry so. yourself. It's the best option. Well, you know that would be that would that would be nice too to actually have someone I could converse with on a on a different level, you know. You know, being single has its virtues, but it's uh, it's got its mirror too, right? And I'm, of course, my uh, my moon is in Venus. <laughs> my Venus rules me. All three indicators are, are Venus with me, just like yours are Mercury, Bendy. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's um. You know, so that's and hey, I got a and I got a party in the Aquarius eleventh house. <laughs> I got actually, I'll tell you what I've got in my eleventh house. I cracked it open just as Santa was reading the charts, just to see if there was anything I could spot for me. <laughs> so and, did I. <laughs> yeah, in the eleventh house, I have um, I have Mars, I have Mercury, I have the Sun, I have Venus, and I have my North Node, all in the eleventh house. Repeat that. You have, say that again. I have Mars, Mercury, the Sun, Venus, and my North Node are all in the eleventh house. Oh wow! See, I have Venus, the Sun, Mercury, and Jupiter all in Aquarius. There but, you go. Um, yeah, the only thing I have in my eleventh house is uh, Mars. Yep. So. But nice. That's nice. You know, so it's an Aquarius rules the eleventh house, right? So. Yep. But um, yeah, I'd love to actually see this one's chart because I've never seen it. You know. Oh, I got some Skype chats going on here. So. Yeah. So sorry, guys. Just kind of letting letting loose a little bit, and um, you know, let you know what uh, what what the world of uh, of, of of Kate is like on a daily basis, you know. I'm, I, you know, I, I, that's the thing too. I'm just, try, I'm, I've got an echo going on, guys. So someone's got speakers or something happening. Um, yeah, it's still echoing. Check. I, I got headphones on too. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly, Randy. Let off the steam a little bit. Hey, guys, why don't you guys just jump in instead of texting me for fuck's sake? I got better things to do than poke buttons. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've opened I've opened the windows up. Like, put your hand up or tell me you want to talk. <laughs> I'd rather hear from you than read. Yeah. You know? Guess what? That's why I have a radio show. <laughs> They're not that just ten pals. I would rather stay there. Yeah, chicken shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going on with her. She's got a chainsaw rolling right now. <laughs> oh, but it's I, I I I've got the I've got the rubber blade in tonight, so it, it'll only burn a little bit. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, no problem. Got you, Randy. He's got his AC on, so it'll just make noise. 
Oh, I, uh, I sent a uh, hello to uh, uh, Lana Wachowski and uh, just thanked her for doing um, uh, a beautiful thing that she did. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I watched uh, I watched that again today. Yep. What to so. I actually, yeah. I actually what? thought it could have been you standing there, okay? Well, that's the whole point. It was she was telling my story and everyone else's in this particular boat that we ride in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the only question was, oh, how do I fit in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But, hey, oh. it is what it is. And, and, and that's the other thing I want to... Okay, this echo is driving me nuts. So I'm just going to check the the mics. It might be a phone line, so let me just I'm just going to check mics here. Checking one, two. Yeah, Rob, it was your phone doing it. It happens on phone, so it's not it's not you. It's just something that happens with Blog Talk. So I had to mute you out there. Uh, we have Magnolia coming in. Thanks, Magnolia. Glad to have you. Hello, Magnolia. Hello, hello. There you are. Hi. Hello? Hello. You can hear me? Loud and clear, soaking the whole world. Wonderful. Yeah, I Hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. So what's up? Oh, not much. I enjoyed the show with Santo. I was sitting there checking out my chart, too. Yeah, that's that's the best thing to do on these shows is just check out the chart, uh, or your own, as he's going, and see if you have anything that correlates with it. It's like playing bingo. Zodiac Bingo. Um, bingo, I have... Well, I don't have Mars in Leo. That's the, that's the ongoing joke. You got Mar- I loved it. I, I loved know. it. That was awesome, Kate. <laughs> yeah, you got Mars and Leo happening? What do you mean? Blah, 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 blah. You must have Mars and Leo. You're angry. No, <laughs> it's okay. Must. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was actually quite funny at the time because... Uh, um, if I recall, the individual did have Mars and Leo. It was quite funny. Mars and Leo... Yeah, I've I've been sitting here trying to study my chart and figure myself out. It's been quite interesting, very interesting um, to look within yourself and yeah. find out all these cool things. My chart is, uh, I'm finding it a little odd. I mean, I have nothing above the horizon but cryon. Everything is below the horizon. Oh, you're I'm hanging a lot out. deeper than I thought. <laughs> yeah, you're hanging out in the dark. Well, you know, the darker it gets, the brighter you can shine, right? Yeah, so, so I'm being told. There's a whole lot um, of you, darling. <laughs> You're in good company. Yeah, I, 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 yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm. Just, I guess I'm just a little shy, and I don't speak much to others much. Uh, or I haven't in a long time. So, well, I tell uh, you, here, here's one little hint for everybody. If, if you were born in the light, i.e., from Aries to Virgo, it is your job to seek the dark contrast. And if you were born below the horizon, Libra through to uh, Pisces, it's your job to seek the light in contrast. Huh. Mirror, mirror. Yeah, yeah. Yin yang, right? Yes, yes. You know, it's like your sign. What does your sign say? Mine, say, mine and Gemini says, I think. So I, I have to put it in the mirror and go, oh, yeah, so i got to learn to not think. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, and lo and yeah, behold. I'm a big I want, and so I've got to try not to want. And if I do well, want, no, you I don't, try to want. Uh, to okay, I'm gonna. Ch- I'm changing people speak when they say it. Use the word try again and watch what happens. You do My or bad. do not. No, you. <laughs> that's that's the ego program. It's not you, right? It's program. Okay. It's it still seeps in. I'm trying to bust people of this. Speak, okay. right? And and sorry, I'm not even trying anymore. I'm just doing it. Right, so when people do that, I will jump on you. I okay. need you to be the gods that you are. I don't know how many times I'm I can just tell you. Doing it. Thank you. So you want or you don't want? Not try. I, I want gonna, uh, or I yeah. don't want. Right now, I'll, I'll say it with try in there. I'm going to try to not want. Oh, look! You're setting yourself up for failure. For Good failure. job. Failure. Well done. Wow, what an well done. Good program running. You know, Yoda had it right. <laughs> Try not, do or do not, you know. <laughs> well, then let me let me rephrase that and say I want things that others want. I try to line myself up with the same wants and desires that others want, you know, clean air, clean water, love in the universe, all that good stuff. 
Yeah, uh, if you want to uh, even go further to break the, the program, start looking at things that you want and say, I don't want that. And watch that little Mrs. Doubtfire get kicked in the ass. That's the that's the trick to the mirror. I don't want for anything. I just roll with what it is. Well, look at the things that you do want and say, I don't want that. I'm telling you this for a very specific reason. Okay. Try it. You'll like it. All right. Well, I have so been me- finding that I, I'm shedding a lot of things out of my life. People, what, objects, everything. What, I'm tr- what I am sharing with you is the ability to manifest the I want. Mm -hmm. To make it happen instead of all the doubts. When you look at something and say that you want, and say, I don't want that, what's the first thing that triggers? Well, yes, I do. The doubts are removed. The postulate is made. The seed is now planted. Move along and wait. Got you. Yep. It's like, mirror, oh, that makes it. All right, I get it. 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 Yeah. <laughs> that's, I'm trying to show people how to break the programs. Yeah. Oh, that's and that's fabulous. The only time I, uh, that's the only time I'll use the word trying. Because it is very trying, I assure you. <laughs> I, re- I remember only, that, that yeah. one. Of, sorry. No, it's okay. I remember that was being one of my granddad's first things he told me when I started learning to read. He said, you're going to stop putting want in all your sentences because um, you become you become a wanton. You learn to want all your life. Yes. In need, want. W-O-N-T. W- 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 hmm. To be in want of. Same yeah. sound. But and I don't want to be in. Oh, you don't want. You actually want to receive it. You just want to want it. Okay, here you go. No, I don't want to want it anymore. Mm. Well, there uh-huh. you go. So play the game. Have some fun. Start putting things that you would normally do in the mirror and do them backwards, and wait to see what happens. <laughs> oh, you're you're messing with the program when you do that. You're you're throwing you're throwing it into connections. That's what we're here to do to bust this ego program. Because until we do, we're going to be at, a, at effect to it where others are in control of it by the indoctrinations. This is about changing our speak, our group think and our group speak. Why do you think, why do you think they want you in schools? Why do you think they want you in churches and go, government offices? Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So right, they can keep right. that program intact. Right. I, I homeschooled my boys. I yeah. homeschooled them for a little while. Until I had, you know, put him in high school, but that's another story. <laughs> um, no, it's all, but it's all. Uh, but they they are so there's there's such a difference between them being homeschooled and then other children that have gone through all of the programming. They're not as I don't know. I you just you can tell the difference from. Wow. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to go there. Why? <laughs> why, are you apolog- why? Why are you apologizing? Applause. Uh, off of um, getting off subject, I guess. I didn't realize there was a topic tonight. Was there one? <laughs> no. I'm the host, and I I don't remember a topic. We had syncretism, of course, being the you know, but we t- we touched on everything. No, there are. That's why it's called open forum. Whatever hits the table, we look at and go, oh, that's neat. <laughs> I'm, I'm always very glad to hear parents that homeschool their kids because in the, in this country, the Netherlands. Oh, I- do it, you're, you're nailed to the cross. It's, it's impossible. It's not. It's unthinkable. So, somebody that has got the chance to actually um, go their own way with schooling with their children, applause. I mean, wow. I mean, pretty cool. Yeah. It was. Uh, I was able to do it a lot. Um, it was nice to do it up here in Minnesota. Uh, I didn't have very many restrictions like other states do. So I was very, you know, very free to do what I wanted, you know, teach. It was very lax and, uh, relaxed. And um, I let them do pretty much not what they wanted. Uh, well, yeah, they did what they wanted. We learned what they wanted to learn. And they progressed nicely. We had fun and we en- enjoyed it. And they are very caring. They're thoughtful of others, you know, but they're typical teenagers now and, you know, typical stuff for young men, but <laughs> they're they're good kids, and uh, yeah, the I, I did run into some problems when they did get into high school, but wasn't that bad. 
You know, they they haven't been in trouble. And I wish more parents would stay at home. I wish society was different. Well, then we, then we have to change the system. We have to take it down. And yes, um, yes, I, I'm slowly doing that over here where I am. Well, I yeah, have to have been uh, you're, studying you're where actually, I am. Definitely. Yeah. You're actually taking some of the information and using it. Yes, I am, and enjoying. Magnolia it. is one of one of the ones that is actually taking the information and planting the seeds. That's all I'm asking people to do. The work is done. Mm-hmm. Do I have to come out and call people lazy mfers or what? The work's yeah. done. Just get in behind right. it. Oh yeah, that's all, that's oh, all yeah. it takes. The fraud is and revealed. Uh, Push it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the young, the, the people that the young people that are coming over that are friends of my sons and and their friends that come over to share the information with them. They're getting online and they're starting to study, and it's just wonderful to see that. So they've always had a, a kind of an open house here for when the, the kids would come over and you know hang out and do whatever. And in doing so, but I like you to get are, on my. I'm in sorry. doing so, Go ahead. that's okay. In doing so, you are changing the intent. Uh, we're sitting with about uh, five minutes left here, so I'm just uh, letting you guys know. Uh, but that—that's the key to it. You know, yeah. where where people get looking at the physical. Well, and here I'll give you a comparison. When people, uh, you know, the friends are learning, they're looking at this, they're coming over, and everything else. Yeah, you're observing the physical. What I'm looking at is is the spiritual. The gathering of the intent. Right. Exactly. And that's what we need exactly. to do. It's changing that's what the I'm intent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when we when we that's change been a beautiful when, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Your timing sucks, Magnolia. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Unreal. Uh yeah, it's kinda like two way radio, right? Um, <laughs> Skype. So just be mindful. That's all, because it's very easy to step on mid sentences if you're not on it. So just let you know. Um, it's the only thing that frustrates me about Skype is is that you, you can't have everybody, and it's probably good too, in that everyone's not jumping all over the place, right? So, but um, yeah, it, it, for me, it is about. Uh, I'm just trying to reinforce your concept. This is kind of what I do. I I take this beautiful concept that you just handed to me, and and I just want to empower it. So when you have what Magnolia is saying about her her boys and the friends coming over, and they're starting to, you know, delve into things that, you know, we weren't able to do when we were teenagers, uh, that is a that is a huge intention shift. Mm-hmm. That's all we need to do: plant the seeds, watch them grow. But we got to keep planting the seeds. You know, we can't sit back and go, well, I planted a seed today, and that's good, you know. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, it will bear fruit. Um, can I, May I suggest uh, maybe an orchard or two? Mm-hmm. You know, start start planting them everywhere, and that's what it takes. So, well, we got about uh, four minutes oh, yeah. here, actually about three, so I'm going to finish off with a song, if you guys don't mind. Great. It would be perfect. Yeah, I just need to kind of shift uh, my own energy because uh, just even talking about it, the situation really wears me down. So uh, I'm going to play uh, the full mix of Like an Angel, and uh, I'm going to thank all you guys for hanging out tonight. And uh, we'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, of course, Saturday is typically uh, Katie Rant night, so uh, be ready for it. Uh, just, <laughs> Looking just forward for, to it. Yeah, just for fun, I, I let loose on Saturday. So, uh, so much love to everybody. Thanks again. All right. Good night. Uh, All right. Good night. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow night. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio. Now it's our turn. From somewhere like a dream. Nothing in return Your love is a 
Provided by VerdictProductions.com Please note the views and opinions expressed by the hosts on this show are not necessarily the views held by the station. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio. Now, it's our turn. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Friday Night Syncretism with yours truly, Kate of Gaia, and of course, magnanimous, always intriguing, always fun, Santo Bonacci. How are you, Santo? Very well, thanks, Kate. Yourself? Oh, good, yeah. You know, all things considered, you know, dealing with uh, little three-headed dogs everywhere, but, you know, other than that, uh, Good. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we're we're gonna have some fun tonight. <laughs> so uh you, you, Oh go ahead, go ahead. You got your dogs back. No, no, I'm speaking of uh, the three headed dogs that I get to deal with, everybody's little cerebuses that uh they ah. can't keep in a short leash that I have to beat to death. <laughs> you know, and I will. <laughs> Just you know me, that's my nature. Right? <laughs> I guarantee you, my Cerebus three-headed dog is way bigger and way better trained than yours. <laughs> it will fetch and go for fresh meat, you know. Anyway, yeah, no, it's just uh, amazing to watch things unfold, especially this week, the way, uh, uh, you know, when you start really seeing what's going on in the world, uh, you really start to lose patience for any form of uh, physical drama, uh, you know, be it whatever news story, whatever, it's like when everyone starts talking about it in the literal, I just go, oh, uh, you're missing the story. What is it saying, you know? Um, I think we can agree that maybe the Bible and maybe, you know, the Quran and a few other interesting, you know, notable books. Uh, an allegory, yeah? That's all they do. Yep. So would it not make sense that if, the Bible were, you know, indoctrinated with in the literal sense, you know, from the Flavians on back, you know, blah, 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 blah. Wouldn't it make sense that if they're trying to get this world to be the literal, then everyone get will take everything that's in front of them literal, therefore tying them to the literal book? See, here's the thing. When you finally understand that everything that is written in these books is allegorical, once you start deciphering it properly, guess what happens to the world outside? Well, gosh darn it, it becomes allegorical too. As above, so below. As within, so without. Did anybody notice that in the Kabbalion, or was I the only one that fucking noticed that? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So when 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 we're, here we are trying to take this allegorical book, right? We find out all this beautiful truth in it, and then we try to explain it literally. 
and it just completely defeats the purpose, you know. Uh, and I'm talking from the literal world viewpoint. It's like, I, you know, and I know how I Tony. I was just posting stuff, and he had made another post. Something about wakey, wakey, the big lie. It's like, you still staring at this stuff, bud? You still staring at the you know, rubberneck in the car wreck? <laughs> or can you not see the allegory behind it? Uh, actually, the allegory is in front of it. It's the literal that's behind the veil. Um, so does that make sense to you? Does to me. You know, yeah, you know, it's it's like people coming to me with, with legal things. What part of your committed fraud aren't people getting? Because it's really simple. Once you understand that you are committing fraud, and you weren't doing it with intent, right? It's ignorance of that law that you're busting, like, from the day you you got here. It's the ignorance of it that's keeping you trapped. So once you become knowledgeable of what the trap was, and actually, that you were in one, that's the big one, right? Did you even know you were in a trap? And once you go, oh, that bear trap's biting into my ankle real hard. Oh, and then you figure out where the mechanisms are, and then you just open the trap and take your foot out. But everyone wants to go, oh, that's a trap. God, that hurts. Shake, 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 shake. God, that hurts. Shake. No, no, no. Try to chew their own legs off. <laughs> There's an allegory for you. It's, it, it, it just blows my mind. Do you want the answer? I mean, I've got the answer for people if they want it. If they can see, here's the thing: once you get yourself back into a condition of knowledge, you know you're not ignorant of the trap. You've opened the trap up. Now what you do is you take the trap and you shove it on the face of the system. It goes, and there it is. Turn the tables. I'll tell you what the proof of the intent to commit fraud without disclosure to my mom and dad was very simple. They they put a building up to prove it. It's called a registry office. If there wasn't an intent to commit fraud via deception and non-disclosure in the first place, the building wouldn't exist, you see. So the mere fact that these buildings, government, whoever that is, these buildings, the simple fact that they exist is proof enough for me, I see the allegory, that there was an intent to deceive. You know, the first brick that got laid to put these buildings up and have people, ignorant, dumb, paper-pushing people, looking in them, that are only kept smart enough to push the little buttons that go ka-ching, 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 so that they get their little ka-ching at the end of the week, which is just a pittance. Keeps them happy, keeps them all fed, keeps them all ego-driven, yeah? So that's proof enough for me. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is quite simply this. I have no name, and I do not give a name. Uh, there was an interesting here. Um, let me grab it because you you weren't actually. Uh, I don't think you caught last night's show at all, but there was a, or the night before there was a very interesting. Um, oh, what's the best word to describe it? Well, there's a, an interesting definition in Black's Law that I would really love to read to you. It's in Black's Law Ninth. I mean, and know me, Santo, uh, just like you, we go at this from the very spiritual. Uh, we come in after sipping the cup of forgetfulness uh, allegory. Can't have a game if you know the outcome, right? But you do know you're going to win. That's And that could be all manner of things. Depends on what your experience is supposed to be. But it's like this. The ego is the only thing holding you. It's the one that ties up and binds up all the emotions. And one of the things that I found very effective with the charts in particular, in you know, the uh, Western uh, Zodiac, uh, Chinese, Mayan, whatever the case may be, they all they all matter. They all actually have beautiful pieces of the puzzle. Or Human Design America for that matter. And the ego is completely controlled with emotion. It's the it's it's the it, if you can take the ego and and understand that it only lives while the body is alive. Of course, it's going to be body intensive. It's it, you know, it's going to want to, you know, indulge in all the seven deadly, right? You know, the lust, greed, the the pride, the, and all the rest of the crap that goes along with, you know, living in a, quote, sinful, <laughs> unquote, uh, existence of, of the world, worldly. That's what the ego is. And you know, the ego, once it gets very comfortable and good survival, you know, the 1.8 VCRs, uh, the 3.6 Jaguars, the 18,000 square foot home that, you, you know, only two people live in, it's ridiculous and you know mountains of of money makes the ego very happy 
but it destroys the the soul. That's the trade off. That's fine. You know, you you want to have all the physical things. Well, you're giving up your spirituality in the process. There's a way to balance this. <laughs> That's what we're working towards, where it's neutral abundance, and you're not only, you're not possessed by your possessions, basically. So all of these things, and that's family too, that's friends, that's culture, that's, you know, the, you know, whatever groups you're affiliated with and all the little cliques and everything else you want to be a part of, these are all attachments. So let's make attachments into a thread or a very thin rope that's holding you. Now imagine for a, a moment, if you will, that you're an eagle and you suddenly wake up one day and you go, I want to fly, and then you go, thump. And you can only go so far because you've got all these threads or little ropes tied to your talons. Now, there, you can still fly a little bit. You can get a better view from where you are. But Pinocchio, you got to cut your strings. And some of them, you know, might take a chainsaw to get through. But if you want to be free, that's what you got to do. So, so don't think for one minute you can fly like an eagle while you have attachments holding you. These are the emotional bonds, right? That's why when they say, you know, you have a bond with someone, <laughs> it's very literal in an allegorical sense. That's why they created birth bonds. They stick that puppy right to your ass until you know, learn how to peel it off. That's one of the biggest let goes of all. That's when we stop worshiping the system. That's when we stop playing in the system and understanding what it really is. When you start figuring it out that you're you're the ones actually feeding the beast and, and making sure the vampires have all the blood they need, and of course spiritual energetics, um, when you finally decide you've had enough, then you then you'll cut those ropes, and you'll let go, and you will get into the stream of universal life. So don't expect to be flying too far while you've got all these ropes tying your ass to the uh, the allegorical ground because you ain't going to do it. So this is one of the joys when Santa comes on for syncretism. You get a better understanding of how these designs work and how they can integrate into your life. And, oh, a quick announcement, too. Um, starting Sunday night, um, I will, uh, I'll will i be doing on-air tarot readings uh, for people. Um, you know, I kind of get loose on that a bit. Um, Magnolia, I was talking to last night, was the uh, first one. And um, it's looking like it's going to be Carol Harris. Uh, from France, the other Carol, uh, that uh, will be second in line there. Uh, like you, Asanto, I don't... Uh, um, doing reads takes a, a little more than five minutes, so I'm not sure how many I can squeeze in. I'll do my best, and uh, first come, first served, and no harm, no foul. If I get to you, great. If I don't... But I'll tell you this. I, like Santo, do not have time, whether it was paid for or not, to do tarot readings during the day. All right, because it takes generally an hour to do a decent one. It can take hours to do a great one, uh, but I can get the point across very fairly quickly. Um, but uh, just wanted to get that out. So there's the allegory, Santo. So um, take her from there. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose you know. I mean, that needs to be said because it's. Um, it's really uh, helping people to see that uh, participating in fictions or Babylon the Babylon the Great, as it is put in theology, is harmful to the health. <laughs> Deadly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I see around me too enough, uh, you know, of that going on still. But look, it's uh, advancing. We are making a lot of headway and uh, so th what we've come to do is certainly doable it's feasible and we're going to do it and we're going to do it properly <laughs> agreed yep <clears throat> it's going to be done uh, everything will go ahead as per scripted and uh, the script was written by the best of the best you know it's not a poor uh, production <laughs> no no most certainly not <laughs> mm. It's a perfect script. It's only us that are messing it up. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh, because people are, you know, we're suffering with a lot of, uh, you know, atrophy and sort of uh, inertia and, um, you know, uh, sleep condition. 
um, hypnotism, but there's still there's still a lot of it. You know, it takes a long time to get rid of those toxins and that teaching and that conditioning. It's promises one of sacred proportions. That's why they hold it under seal. But here's the trick. You see, the agreement that went into, even in mom and dad's ignorance, there was still an intent to deceive. And a fraud revealed is null and void, nunc pro -tunc. So now it's up to, you know, the system to say, you know, you say to them, is it the, court, is it the system's intent now to aid and abet me into committing a fraud that I know of uh, using somebody else's property that clearly isn't mine? It says copyright. And there was an intent by the system in the first place to aid and abet me into doing this via my parents as third-party interlopers. How is that a contract? How is it binding on me? It's got nothing to do with me. At which point you raise your digitus impudicus, you spit in their eye, and you dress them funny and walk out. No, they already do that. Never mind. So there you go. Any other questions, class? I didn't think so. Start doing it. You'll see what happens. Watch. Plant the seeds for crying out loud. I'm just tired of this. <sighs> Shit all the time. Anyway, so uh, what's up in the stars, Santo? <laughs> uh, well, I haven't really checked recently. Uh, good thing is Jupiter's in Cancer now, so that's the sign of his exaltation, and that will bring many um, abundant things to people who have uh, strong Jupiter in their charts in particular. But um, Jupiter in Cancer is a very nice thing. comes around every 12 years. So, you know, I've had tw uh, four of these Ju Jupiter Cancer transits in my life, I guess, five. I'm 50. Uh, oh, four. Four, anyway, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, um, enjoy it. It's um, it's a beautiful uh, motherly sign, and Jupiter is the quintessential fatherly figure, really. So, blending his beautiful airy energy, Jupiter's light is considered in astrology the greatest of all the lights. There's nothing comparable. Simply, there is nothing comparable. You know. <laughs> Even the adoration for Sirius and Venus and the moon and the sun just doesn't compare. He gets all the glory. Uh, in fact, Firmicus Matern Maternus said, if there was only just Jupiter, we would be immortal. But because the system has decreed or the gods have decreed that uh, bodies should um, have a certain amount of life, the other planets... Um, and their energy comes into play and destroys the work of Jupiter because his light is just is that good. And so in Cancer, the motherly sign, the, the sign of the home and the ancestry, um, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a great, fat, abundant year with Jupiter. Many, nice. many... Yep. And, of course, Cancer is the home of the moon and the uh, the emotions, really. Cardinal water, the water of the bodies. So there's Jupiter stimulating the psychic, the emotional part. And uh, with his best, very, very best of energy, really. Um, Jupiter also rules Pisces and Sagittarius. But in Cancer, that's his exaltation. And so it's very significant. This is... Pay attention to... Uh, what that means and how it affects the individual, yourself, and you'll see its influence in your life. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I've been uh, playing with my new uh, Mayan car that uh, Miranda sent, and oh my, <laughs> they're quite something, and uh, just, it just backs up everything you uh, you just said there. Yeah, there's uh, monstrous things right now. Oh, <clears throat> oh yeah. I did, uh, I was going to say, I gave a, 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 I've never used this analogy before, but I'm going to use it tonight uh, when I was talking to Johnny. Um, when we talk about, uh, inspired by the word exaltation, no less, right? A lot of people have a hard time letting go of the system and you know, trying to find this way and that way and the other. And 
um, got to tell you guys, I've I've been in it for well over two years, and uh, no, it's not easy. It's not. But don't expect anything worth having to be easy to get. That's the gimme gimme. Uh, join the free man on the land movement. They'll help you with that one. Um, or the sovereign citizens. Yeah, they'll help you too. Or, or any of these UCC people. They'll oof, opt. Sign up. Give away your soul. Um, yeah, go ahead. But here's the analogy. You know, so many of us want to uh, want to soar, but we're so unable to let go. And this is why... Uh, I'm hoping that you can do a couple of charts tonight. Uh, I really want to Ninja's chart. Like I'm so like chomping at the bit to hear her chart. But uh, to get back to what I was saying, you see, without your design, you don't really have any idea or any clue of who or what you are, what your purpose is. You might have an inkling inside. I can't say I don't. I'm not your experience. You are. You don't, only you know what your perspective heart says. If you want some helpful hints, though, know thyself. That's, that's what the As Above Science is all about. It's about giving you the clues back as to what particular angle or angel you are and to start you know, manifesting the things that you were supposed to when you got here. You know, Because I can only hear the, the resonance inside of me, the intuitive is like, you know, before I came in back into this game, it's like, oh, yeah, this is going to be easy. This is going to be great. This is going to be wow. And you don't remember anything. <laughs> the good news is, if you're smart, which we all are, we always leave all the clues and place them into the game board, right? We come into the game fully prepared. Um, unfortunately, uh, perspective, right? So, that's what I do. And I'm going to share something. Um, and I know, because it, it, I had it highlighted in the book, because I, I passed it you know, once before and looked at it, and it had triggered then, but not to the same degree that it's triggering right now, because, gosh darn, I have a different understanding of what's going on now, right? So let me let me share this with you. Sorry, I just had to go and grab the book itself. And you know me, I like uh, Black's Law Knight. Oh, and for anyone that doesn't have a copy of it, don't worry, there's one there for you if you want it. You can go to kateofgaia.wordpress.com, and it's a 100 meg file. Um, free to download, grab it, it's there. Ninjas, so very kindly put it up. And uh, it's there for everyone as long as well as everything else. And guess what? It's free. Huh. I don't believe in copyrights. <coughs> copyrights are for fictions. Information and truth for me is real. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Um, what's your understanding, uh, Santo, of the, of the word gift? Uh, gift is a, well, something that is given um, freely without. Uh, desire for res- you know, reciprocation, I guess. Right, without consideration, yeah. Mm, without consideration. Yeah, so it's like when I give you a gift, I don't expect you to... Well, not like they've tried at Christmas. Well, I got... So, uh, somebody's going to get me a gift, so I have to get them one. See, that's not a gift. That's called an obligation. <laughs> you are obligated to, to buy something because you feel guilty otherwise. But here's the spiritual... And this is why it's so imperative and why they call it a given name. If something has been given, it must have been a gift. Stands to reason to me. So here's uh, here's what a gift is, and I'm going to give you a, 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 uh, an anagram of it. So here it is, gift, noun, 12th century. The voluntary transfer of property to another without compensation. A thing so transferred, gift. Now, there's another one. Um, I'm, I'll go and look this up, but it's um, C. Inter Vivos Gift. But what... Here, actually, I'll do that right now so we can keep this. Inter Vivos Gift uh, from 1848. A gift of personal property made during the donor's lifetime and delivered to the donee with the intention of irrevocably surrendering control over the property, also termed gift inter vivos, lifetime gift or an absolute gift. Okay. But here's the interesting one. Here's the anagram. G-I-F-T, abbreviation, the abbreviated form. So G dot I dot F dot T dot stands for gamete intrafallopian transfer. What does that sound like to you? 
sounds like a kid, doesn't it? Hmm. Right? Well, what's a gamete? You got a gamete, a zygote, and then you have embryo, and et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is like right from source here. Gamete intra fallopian transfer. That's very interesting. So I see where they they went that route. Now, they call it a given name, and then we'll get into what you want to talk I just thought this would be an interesting thing to start off. I had a good chat with Johnny um, just actually about an hour ago. And, uh, you know, still people are still trying these tricks and gimmicks, UCC and UP and the rest of the the illusion. And, and guys, stop. 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 You're driving me nuts. People think they can play the system. The system isn't meant to be played. You're either party to it, i.e. one of the bad guys that's, quote-unquote, right, of which your ego is completely sold. You've sold your soul, literally, to the devil. That's an allegory. And you are trapped in the, you're being harvested in in, in the spiritual sacred geometry here. Right? Phi, psi, call, physical. Or you decide that you don't want to be part of that. So you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. Sorry, you cannot be completely physical and or completely spiritual. You got to find the middle road here, right? Because the the physical is the effect of the spiritual. Not and here we are trying to be cause over this effect that we're at effect to. It's stupid. So you know when I hear people talking about well I've got this thing uh, you know treasury and credits and la la la. Shut up. Cry me a river. Look at you, gimme, gimme. Still caught in the game. Still don't know what money is. Still don't know that you're cannibalizing your fellow human beings. Still don't care, obviously. Give me an arm, quick. I'm really hungry. Fucking zombies. Walking Dead. You're not seeing the clues in Hollywood? TV shows? You know? Dead man walking? Lots of hints out there that try to tell you that you're dead. You need to wake up. And the longer you play in this game, the longer you stay dead. Right? The birth certificate is a death certificate. But here's the clincher. Go to creativeguy.wordpress.com. Two documents you need to, to to read, and you need to read them until you get what the documents are saying. One is an easy-to-read, layman's terms, description of I who shall not be named, which is a more, quote, legalese type document that they understand. Right? So those two documents, the long part of it, and I who shall not be named. Didn't get it the first time? Then you need to read, long and short of it, I who shall not be named. If you still didn't get it, here's another suggestion. Read this. The long and short of it, and I who shall not be named. And keep doing that, you know, until it sinks in and you go, oh my God, I see it. Because only until you see it, you are in fraud. Once you see it, the name is yours. Because the fraud was placed on mom and dad. The aid and abetting of the fraud the onus was placed on them to get their children, i.e. you, me, all the rest of us, to commit fraud. They're the ones that aid and abet it by giving us a document we should never have ever gotten uh, because they gave the name away. That's why they call it a given name. That's why it's held under seal. A seal or a say all, himself, herself, itself, all, is the, is the highest order of promise. A lifetime thing, really. You've got to cover, uh, peel layers and layers off. But uh, the good thing is that your audience is receptive to, you know, the higher sciences and able to use them to, you know, for leverage, to um, catapult them in the ascension process. Um, That's what it's for. These are all... The ancients left us the best of the best stuff. Stuff, and they, they etched it into the rocks you know, for instance, one example is the zodiac of Dendera, five thousand years old, they say. <laughs> um, but you could put a, another zero on the end of that at least. But um, but they did that so that idiots that came along after wouldn't be able to scratch them out. <laughs> so the cross has endured, the cardinal cross, it has endured. Uh, when Marco Polo went to Japan, he saw everywhere the cross. When Columbus and the conquistadores invaded the Americas, the cross was everywhere. Everywhere was the cross. 
the Chinese have the cross, the Indians have the swastika, um, everywhere on the planet, in one form or another, and, and it remains, because that that cross describes everything in theology and everything in the universe. In theology, they talk of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge. Those are the two trees, the two axes, axes of the cross. Um, they also depict the process of creation, how creation is done through vibration, through vibration, and vibration shares a root with the word verb. And verb is the Latin word for the Greek word logos, which is at the end of all of our sciences, astrology. Um, um, one more for verb, ready? Yeah. It's uh, ver dash B, capital B, which is 13. Ver, meaning truth. So the higher truth. It's action, right? The act ion. Beautiful. Exactly. Uh, and so, <clears throat> verb, you see it in the word reverberate. So it's a vibration. It's the word. It's the word of God. Vibration. So this crisscrossing, the cross, describes this vibration. And it also describes the four cardinal points along the ecliptic of the sun's path and describes them in two dimensions. March the 21st is the equinox. June the 21st is the solstice. September the 21st is an equinox. And December the 21st is the other solstice. And those are the four cardinal points. <coughs> and so... <coughs> It describes how electricity, the electric sun, gets things done along the ecliptic. And it has four points, and it describes those four strong points of the uh, cardinal posts. Yes, that's right. Posts, stakes, pivots, they are called either one of those in astrology. This is why Jesus has 12 posts, 12 apostles. Because the twelve signs were called posts, <laughs> uh, and so and so they left it to us and see what we would make of it, and so we could never um, scratch it out as the elites have tried to do. They've tried to destroy all those uh, <clears throat> temple uh, reliefs. And, and you see, they're doing, they're still doing this in in uh, fundamentalist countries, uh, where they're destroying, you know, um, <clears throat> some of this uh, stuff that was etched into stones for our you know, for our times. You see, and and taking them away and stealing them. For instance, the Dendera stone is no longer in Dendera, <laughs> on the on the banks of the Nile. It's now in the French Museum in the Louvre, in a dark little room. You see, because they want you to think that this is just a, a stone that the, you know that the means nothing. It has no technology on it that can help you, and you know the barbaric Egyptians uh, just um, had this stone, and here we French, we enlightened ones, uh, you know, have captured it for your amusement. There you go. Look at this and and, and see how far we have advanced now. You know, we have. Uh, allopathic uh, medicine now uh, to treat your diseases whereas Hippocrates said <clears throat> that a practitioner of truth a doctor or a medic cannot call himself one if he is ignorant of astrology and of course doctors uh, are proud of their Hippocratic oath and they, they display this on their in their clinics you see uh, but they are trampling on the the very philosophy of Hippocrates because he said astrology first and then you can call yourself a medic. <laughs> you know, don't put the cart before the horse. Well, yeah, that totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is why they're quite happy to just uh, open up, cut your body open and let you bleed to death because... The moon is transiting the part of your body which above is the signs of the zodiac. Uh, 
for instance, if they are operating on your heart and the moon is in Leo, and in particular receiving a square from say Mars or Saturn, uh, rest assured you're not going <laughs> you're not going to make it home. You know, you'll re you'll your corpse will remain there under the hands of the surgeon, the idiot who forgets his hippocampus.